from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Dave Damashek, with Gina Grad on news, Walt Bryan on sound effects, and a phone call from Jeff Ross. And now, forget the Olympics, it's time to discuss the real competition, Fruit of the Year. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get on mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to some friends. Love that about you, right, Jean Grant? That's right. And Bob Brown. Shut up and F my a hole. <laughs> Sheck coming in. Quite Lots to talk about with Sheck because we just spent the weekend with the man. Quick question about fruit of the year. Mm. Has watermelon ever been fruit of the year? I don't know. We got to ask Sheck. Okay. Yeah, he's the keeper. He's the, the keeper. He's a keeper. I always I, thought he picked the apple. He cares about the apple. He he likes saying um, apple crisp, uh, sweet crisp, the honey crisp, apple. honey crisp. He likes the top. Look again. Yeah, honey crisp is a great apple. He cares about apples. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Might I remind everyone? The last time I flew, I flew um, Comfort Plus. Mm-hmm. Note that meant. Mm-hmm. Uh, it meant I got the space above my head to okay. put my bag. And that's all I can think of. Okay. The point is, is when you get super euphemistic with the names, right. like uh, the ladies donating their eggs and stuff like that, <laughs> we're harvesting yeah. the eggs right. and selling them on the black market. Yes. That's that's what it is. So when you have to start- Pretty sure it's on the up and up. Black market. <laughs> Google me right. The point is, is when you have to start putting honey and crisp in your apple- Nah, I you're, agree. you're gilding the lily. You're yeah. overcompensating. You know you don't have the product there. Totally they, agree. They started down that hill when they got red delicious. Red delicious. Yeah, red and mealy. Oh. Right. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get into that. It was a long argument with Jimmy. We already had it at the club, but we'll revisit this. Evidently. Um, by the way, we could file this under uh, arguments. Uh, bl- black people think white people have, and well, they would be this, they, right. this, they would be right <laughs> on produce. this one. All right, so uh, we got that. I was uh, watching a Love Boat last night. You don't say. Mm-hmm. And uh, to switch it up. <laughs> Marion Ross popped up. Oh, Mrs. C. Now we we might. I think we're going to be oh. playing Dead or Alive later. So I thought oh, uh, no. she's good. It's and good I thought uh, I don't know. Mrs. C. Marion Ross. Oh, I mean, God, she nervous. she was not young when she was doing the Love Boat. At no. the risk of being ignorant, this is Mrs. Cunningham. Yes, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. from Happy Days. Mm-hmm. And multiple appearances on Love Boat. I don't know what else. <laughs> Apparently, she's, sure. I don't know what else she's done. But it did. Uh, what well, you guys want to take a guess at if she's alive? Yeah. Oh, when did that show run? Late seventies. <laughs> uh, Happy Days. Yeah. Happy Day started in probably like 75 or something, okay. 74. Okay. It started early. I'm going to, oh, fuck. Okay. Um, alive. She'll, alive. Be, she'll be in her 80s. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. And not to be confused with Charlotte Ray, I don't think she's alive. She is alive oh, at age 92. Good Holy for Lord. her. I'm wow. happy to hear it. But... Uh, someone I, I've told you guys about uh, my Acme comedy troupe uh, and some of the folks that were about that troupe uh, way back in the day. And maybe the Groundlings, uh, her daughter I was friends oh. with huh? and uh, Ellen. In, in Acme or in uh, Groundlings? or other? I think I might may have met her at the Groundlings and then maybe moved to Acme at uh, at some point if, <laughs> if memory serves. She was serves. moved out with you? <laughs> I I was moved out. Invited to go. She was a very good sketch, improvisational, probably better sketch actress, characters, and all that kind of stuff. Makes makes sense. Never seemed to be really close to her mom. Interesting. Uh, But also, and I do, as I was thinking about it last night when I was taking a walk down IMDb, I attended her wedding, uh, and then she went on to write for Friends. I think her, oh. her big oh. credit is, wow. is Friends. I'm sure she's done well. It yeah. was such a, a big deal when somebody in the troupe would get sure. on to a TV show or something. Many were performers, and then they went on to be writers mm-hmm. and producers. I think she was uh, a co-EP of Friends. On the TV God show. Damn. Yeah, Good on the T, and I guess she got there uh, pretty early on wow. too. So Good for her. Uh, and I was just thinking, yeah, her name is uh, Ellen Plummer, and really? she's super sweet. 
You know what you should do? Or uh, Meskimen. I, I, I don't know, I don't know how, how it works, but Ross may not have been Marion Ross's last name. Meskimen sounds should, uh, better. You should take some time to you know, make a semi-comprehensively hard to make comprehensive, of course, list of people you cross paths with, the groundlings and uh, Acme, sort of a where are they now or what, what did they do kind of thing, because this is, this is kind of fascinating. Yeah, and like you said yesterday, people are always on the up and up and rising through the ranks. I say they should do it and put me on their <laughs> list, bitch. It'll be a short segment. <laughs> Uh, you're right. Yeah, there were a lot of people. There was tragedy. There's a guy named Vic Wilson I've spoken about. It was super handsome, hunky guy that was like the funniest guy in the world. And, you know, I looked him up. He died at 51, you know, several years ago. Like, uh, yeah, there was the, uh, well, huh. I wonder if there's any uh, connection here. Because uh, Phoebe from Friends, um, Lisa Kudrow, Lisa Kudrow was, was a groundling. Right. I was there right. when she was a groundling too. I wonder if she somehow see with Ellen. Over, yeah. yeah, I'll uh, I'll put that I'll put that uh, list together one of these days. All right. So hot love boat talk. <laughs> no, no, that was it. It was oh. just it was just reminded <laughs> me. Gonna see a clip. No, no, no. Come on. Mm. I'm not going to waste the audience time with that kind of... <laughs> yeah. That's personal. She Chicanery. 45-year-old television Understood. show. Don't be ridiculous. Right. My mistake. Yes. Um, uh, so I'll... Uh, I'm not sure about this... Uh, not sure about your Gavin Newsom note here, Max Zapata, but you can, uh, you can expand on that. All right. Um, oh, Max Zapata found a uh, homeless uh, treehouse. Oh, oh. Really? Well, it makes sense if we're going to be right. building That's and we're going to be call, yeah. building outside. Then let's let's get up off the ground. Wow. I, I found this on the internet. I don't really think I found oh. it like personally. But they yeah, pull a so permit they, for that. I think yeah. That's my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I don't Jesus. know where it's taken from the freeway. This is in L.A. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is weird that you're seeing structures now. I know we've delved into this before, but now we're going up the tree. Wow! And we're just building in a tree. Whoa! I should say. When I had my dinner with the fire department mm-hmm. in Malibu last week, and their thing was, we do, uh, we do, we do brush fires here. Like, mm-hmm. so if you want to be in the Malibu fire department, you're not going to be putting out warehouse fires. Right. You're going to be putting out brush fires. You know, and I said, like, what's up with the? How are these brush fires? Like, oh, it's all homeless. They all live in the creek in Topanga Canyon, or they just live up in the up in the hills of Malibu, and there's where the fires start. So, what's to be done between the environmentalists and the ACLU? Because they're going to start button heads soon over this. It's 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 an interesting. I think we've all seen this over the last several months, but certainly the last several years. Once you kind of allow something to be just as is, you know what I mean? Then it's really hard to unring the bell. Then it's a thing to unring the bell. So it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like if you let your kid, I don't know, dress up like Pippi Longstocking. Sure. Check. You should probably nip it in the bud, like on the first day before they head into the ninth grade. You let it go a week. Now there's no undoing. That's that's, that's it. it. That's now it. now you're undoing what is. Right. You know what I mean? So homeless camping everywhere and living in the hills and starting brush fires. I couldn't think of a better example. Uh, clearly. But the point <laughs> is, uh, the point is, is once they start pitching tents at the park, I mean, look no further than the, the bop. All right. The park. They clean the park out. Now the park's fine. They can use the park. But somebody put a tent in there and nobody said anything. And so someone put another tent. And then next thing you know, we got a bunch of fucking Pippi Longstockings running around because nobody like jumped in and went. Bringing it we home gotta, like a pro. And we patchwork gotta bloomers. Stop it now. Yeah. We got to yeah. stop it right now because now it is. And then what you're asking them to do is undo something that is. Right. So and it, and it's sort of a it's somehow been. I, I wouldn't say condoned, but it's like, yeah, well, could. This, this is what's happening. Yeah. We have this people living here. And then you go, well, we need to get all this trash out of here. And you go, oh, you want to get these people to move? This yeah. is the guy lives in a tree. You know, right. that's, it is. Yes. And, and 
to that point, there was a, I think it was homeless or street people of Los Angeles or something. Someone sh- put up a picture of you can see inside someone's encampment a flat screen TV and they are watching some Olympics or some sports. And it says underneath, you know, don't bother calling the police because they'll tell you the same thing. You should have voted for somebody else. There's nothing we can do. Well, that's funny you mentioned that. I don't know if you guys saw the Eric Garcetti signed an ordinance approved by city council to, to uh, basically criminalize uh, homelessness. You uh, make it illegal to uh, be under. It's pretty restrictive. It's like be under uh, overpasses in parks. This was two, three days ago. Can anyone else hear about this? Boy, how can that not be? That's not a headline. It's not a headline I got. It's crazy. Well, I re- Christy and I both read the story this morning. Wow. It's one element of a very complicated equation. Like, how is this going to be enforced? Will it be enforced? Where are they going to go? You know what I mean? Like, this doesn't feel like a super well thought out plan, but. <laughs> Uh, I don't know the New Republic, but I imagine that they have a a bit of a take, a bit of a slant. The um, headline is Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti declares war on the homeless. New Republic's pretty liberal, I think. Okay. Yeah, the war, by the way. That's the next thing, too. You want to build a structure on the sidewalk in Studio City underneath the overpass where people walk back and forth to the Gelsons with their kid in a stroll. That's not declaring war no, on homeless my people. Gelsons. And any more than it would be if someone wanted to pitch a tent on my front lawn and I wanted them to leave. It's right. not declaring war no. on them. I think it's any place that impedes the public, which is almost anywhere. Out, outdoors. Yeah, any sidewalk, any yeah. park, any anything. Well, speaking of bad uh, <laughs> politicians, I had mm. this uh, clip I was sitting on. So, you know, we're trying to recall Gavin Newsom out here in California. Newsom has some, uh, he's in full repair mode. Oh, he doesn't want to go. I'm getting the email, the thirsty ass emails from him. He does not want to go. And he's uh, decided, well, I think he was speaking about what's going on with the uh, vaccinations. And okay. I, I think in California or maybe LA County, and I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. But first, let's hear why. But here's the interesting part. All right, he's in charge. Mm-hmm. He wants Californians to be vaccinated. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to hear why more Californians aren't being vaccinated. Okay. And what do you attribute that those 25% that have remained unvaccinated, what do you attribute that to in your state? Well, overwhelming majority of misinformation by right-wing pundits, period, full stop. Time to be a little bit more specific. The Ron Johnsons of the world, the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world, the Tucker Carlsons of the world. I watch them. I listen. I pay attention. They're misinforming people. They're literally putting people's lives at risk. People are dying because of the misinformation, either knowingly or unknowingly. Regardless, time to call it out. Draw these lines. The overwhelming majority of people. And there's good people that, look, I recognize have real hesitation. All right. So the reason 25 percent of the populace of the state that he governs over aren't getting vaccinated is because of misinformation by Ron Johnson. Mm. Who is that? That's this, this porn is, star. I think he's this, in jail. This is me. This is my point. I don't know who that is. It's that Republican senator from who the fuck knows oh, where. I don't know. Then there's Marjorie oh. Taylor Greene, who's the nut job who thinks uh, the Jews are firing laser beams at Saturn or whatever. And then there's the person you've heard of now. First off, if I walk through Los Angeles or Sacramento or anywhere in between and I ask the average person, do you know who Ron Johnson is or Marjorie Taylor Greene? And does she impact your life in any meaningful way? And or do you take advice from her? The answer would be no. Now, Hispanic and black are the lowest vaccinated. So probably the least likely to be TiVoing Tucker Carlson. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing. But He's not speaking to them. California has 40 million people in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tucker Carlson does about three and a half million mm. a night. So, and then out of that three and a half million, what percentage are black and Hispanic and live in SoCal? I'd be curious. Uh, it's exceedingly low. So yeah. this human has a problem, the, or at least as a question, why aren't more people vaccinated? He, as a problem solver, mm. says, we got to pull Tucker Carlson off the air. That 
wouldn't appear to solve the problem to me in any way, <laughs> shape, or form, especially that if you just did a loose poll, if you just walked around, if you went to the Home Depot that's a, that's a block from here, and you stood out front, and everyone who went in, you asked who Ron Johnson or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Tucker Carlson, it'd be a very low, and then do you watch Tucker Carlson? It'd be a very low batting average, exceedingly low. So this person is not into the problem solving. Now, yeah. I get it. You're a politician, but you can say, hey, 25 percent. We're not doing as bad as right. many states. And uh, I have uh, vaccine mobiles that I'm looking to dispatch to neighborhoods that are underserved or something. Yeah. We're going to blame Ron Johnson, who no one knows. No, never heard of him. On this. Well, and that's the He's thing. He's such a fucking pompous buffoon. He's such an idiot. <laughs> I mean, forget about politicians and lying and all, you know, my party and all that kind of stuff. You run the state of California. You've just named three people that no one in California cares about as the reason mm-hmm. we're not getting vaccinated. Right. Species at best. Well, and if, if someone said, what do you think the main reason is that, you know, some that most of Amer- or whoever in America isn't vaccinated? I think it would be reasonable to say, and we've talked about it at this point, because they don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yes. But they this is... They have a pre-existing you know, right. resistance. Either, or either way, it's because they don't want to. Now, it's because somebody told them on, you know, t- cable news, I don't know. But, it, but this is very specific, and you're right. This is not the reason why Southern Californians are not choosing to be vaccinated. And this is why people have to learn to do interviews, where you mm-hmm. go, okay, what percentage of Californians are not being vaccinated because of Ron Johnson and Valerie Taylor <laughs> Green Marjorie. or whatever, Marjorie Taylor Green? Who, who... Really? It's a little weird. It's just such a lying sack of shit. Speaking of lying sacks of shit, <laughs> Jeff Ross is on the blower. Hey, hey come on. I resemble that comment. <laughs> Jeff, um, Mike August was great because um, Mike said uh, Jeff was all fired up to do the uh, Sal, Cousin Sal roast on Friday night that we did in Vegas, but mm-hmm. got uh, tested positive for COVID. Yeah. Uh, I've never missed a roast. I was in, I was distraught over this. And he, now you've been vaccinated, right? I took the Johnson and Johnson. Yep. Ron and Johnson. then you got, Ron co- Johnson you were, po- Ron you were po- you're positive, <laughs> COVID positive, COVID positive again, just like Mike. Yeah, it's crazy. And I found myself at five in the morning binge watching the Mandalorian eating ice cream and potato chips and I thought maybe I'm just pregnant. <laughs> Wait, August is COVID positive? Is do we all know this? Oh, did I say I, that? I, yeah, Mike I, I heard tell of this. Oh, I know. Oh, I don't know if I I talked uh. about it or not. Yeah, he was COVID positive too. But sure? no I he gave didn't a really lot have of hugs sim- to he didn't really have symptoms. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or light 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 symptoms. Yeah, Jeff, do light. you have symptoms? Mike, Mike had super light symptoms, but his daughter was sick, so he went to get his daughter tested because she couldn't go back to school. Her, da- His daughter tested negative, and he tested positive, Weird. and yeah, he didn't feel anything. So, uh, Jeff, did you have symptoms? Yeah, I was very sick for about five, six days, and I'm out of it now. I just tested negative, so I'm feeling a lot better, but still, it still beat me up pretty hard. Oh. Even with the vaccination? I guess so, man. Um, J&J, who knows? One jab. You know, I, I would have been a lot sicker without it. But then again, if I hadn't gotten vaccinated, I wouldn't have gotten sick because I would have stayed home longer. <laughs> but they told us to go out. I took my mask off. I was back working. And yeah, I got sick. So the joke's on me. Do we have, uh, Jeff, what are you planning on for your next uh, big time roast? Do we have some names you could drop on us? Uh, I do have uh, something cooking that is major, but I can't say anything yet. I wish I could, and I will definitely come back and talk about it when I can, but I don't want to blow the deal yet. All right. Well, get me in on it whenever the time comes. Well, you killed so hard at that Alec Baldwin roast um, that, you know, I still pull that video up and and watch your rant on there and and die laughing. Um, And I did get to FaceTime in and watch you roast Cousin Sal in Vegas on Friday. Don Barris was nice enough to let me watch. And you killed Adam. I was really proud of you. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, What means a lot coming from you. And again, roast isn't, it's not my forte per se, but I knew the room pretty well. The funniest part is that everybody's sitting around. It's private party, invited guests only. Uh, 
and you came from backstage like you were doing a real show. I thought that was adorable. <laughs> yeah, I don't like climbing up from the audience. I sat in the green room. <laughs> Uh, and I watched the rest of the roast, and honestly, um, uh, I'm probably the only guy in the world who's glad he got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Danny Two Sheets got called up and then just said, no, nah, I'm not roasting, and turned around and oh, went and sat oh, back down again. Yeah, what it. was that? What was that? Well, Daniel had a couple of Sal stories mm-hmm. chambered, but as Jeff knows right. from the roast... Jimmy and Ivy and his sister and and Jimmy's sister, I, I perhaps I can't remember the order of everyone, but everyone went up there and told stories, and they told those stories. Oh, no. So <laughs> Daniel's out there, probably three sheets to the wind, scratching out stories on his notepad. He's got two stories to right. tell, and they just got told. Now he's being pushed up on stage, uh, and he's like, I don't have anything. Uh, but Mike, Mike thought it'd be funny if you shared a few of your uh, Sal roast jokes uh, with us. Because oh, okay. We know. Well, you we know, know, you're ready. I'm not going to. Uh, I, uh, you know, normally I only roast people to their, you know, when they're present. But you and I know Sal so well, and he's such a friend of your show. I feel comfortable giving you a little teaser. Um, Sal, you're. So, uh, this is in Vegas. Sal's kind of home court. You know, we all know how much he loves to gamble. <laughs> Sal, you're such a degenerate gambler. When your wife, Melissa, said, I do, you lost 10 grand. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sal's nickname in Vegas is Unlucky Luciano. <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey, Sal, you look like a bookie who only, who only breaks crab legs. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sal has already lost money tonight. He bet that Adam Carolla wouldn't be invited, but here we are. Oh! <laughs> uh, Sal looks like an attorney for minions. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you have to picture Sal, but yeah, it's good. Oh, you can picture Sal. He looks like Winnie the Pooh if he ate marinara sauce instead of honey. Oh! <laughs> Sal, how does anyone ever trust you with their money? Your last name is literally Aya Khan. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right, here's one of my favorites. On the man show, people thought we were sexist when we hired the juggies. But the truth is, we couldn't have Sal have the biggest tits in the office. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sal has a wife and three kids. He should have four, but he lost his first form when Scott Norwood kicked it wide right. Oh! (laughs) Uh, Sal looks like an attorney. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Before he became a professional bookie, Sal used to practice law. He got his degree from Vinny's Law School in Lube Jobs. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) Sorry, I'm still coughing from the COVID. I like the COVID roast. (laughs) Yeah. Um, oh, never mind. Here, hold on. Let me see. Uh, here's a good one. Sal, uh, your podcast has less female viewership than a glory hole at Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, now, well, I'm, Jeff, I'm let save, me... I, I'm going to save the rest for Sal's 60th. Let me, uh... Oh! Let me ask you this. What's the process? Do you, you work with writers... Do you, do you farm some of this stuff out? Do you hand them a premise? Do you tell them to, you know, IMDb Sal and get back with a couple ideas? Like what, what's the process? Well, you know, with a, with a big time TV roast, you obviously I staff up and have a lot of help uh, because, you know, I'm producing the whole show and I want to really kill and I have to close. But with Sal, uh, I really wrote it with my, myself I ran a few jokes by Don Barris at the comedy store, and uh, my cousin Ed and my buddy Eddie sat around with me for a little while, and we came up with some stuff. Um, and to be honest with you, remember Mike Ferrucci who wrote on The Man Show? Ferrucci, yeah. The, the Rooch, he told me to say hi to you. Uh, he sent me a few lines. And, you know, I put my own spin on it, mix it all together. And uh, But with Sal, this one was so personal. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I probably would have said in the moment, I did, I'm not going to share today. I'll save it for Sal's 
uh, you know, hopefully his 60th will do a roast or something like that. Or funeral. Uh, so, Or funeral. <laughs> no, I think Sal's probably going to outlive me, believe it or not. And the one thing I was going to do, which I didn't get to do, was when Jimmy Kimmel asked me to roast Sal, I, I wrote back, I'm in, but no physical contact. <laughs> because... Every time I roast Sal, it winds up with me in a headlock on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had two gigantic Caesar's Palace security guards all set to stand <laughs> on either side of me during the roast, but I didn't get to do it. Uh, so I'll have to. I, it was truly heartbreaking to miss because I haven't seen Sal in a year and a half. And I, he's like family and he's been pranking me. I literally probably could have had my. Uh, my shrink helped me write this one. <laughs> the uh, I'll tell you what you missed. Uh, you missed the night after the roast. Uh, Saturday night, we all Jimmy rented out a restaurant. We all went there and we talked. Uh, Josh Gardner, deaf frat mm-hmm. guy, talked yeah. him into doing the porn audition for everybody. <laughs> That's the best. I love Josh. Uh, deaf frat guy, right? Yes. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, I miss the whole, I miss all the guys. I really do. I miss Jimmy's family, his cousins, his parents. It would have been nice to see you, Adam. Uh, I was, uh, it, it was a tough one. This COVID thing is a real pain in the ass. I know. We had a plate, we had a place for you on uh, Garagas's uh, private jet. We're why all are you, set ma- to why go. are you doing this? Yeah, I know. Rub it in. I, it was. Uh, uh, it's funny, you know. Johnny Walker Blue with your name on it. As much as I enjoy watching Josh do his porn star audition, I realize yeah. I enjoy it more when a large group of uh, uninitiated people are around us trying to figure out what the fuck is going on <laughs> and why we're all laughing like maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You know, it's like you know. You, me, Sal, Tony Barbieri, uh, Jimmy, uh, a few others, uh, we've been doing the same jokes to each other, the same practical jokes and the spin on the same stuff for, I don't know, over 20 years, 25 years, and it's still funny. And uh, uh, and more than anything, roasts really bring people together. They really are the epitome of great friendships and, you know... uh, so it was. I, I was proud of Sal uh, at how well he took the jokes, from what I could tell, over the FaceTime. Yeah, he uh, he took it like a champ. Um, yeah, Josh did uh, porn star audition part one and part two, which is part one Ooh. he he gets on top, mm-hmm. and then part two he lays down on his back, and she gets sure. she gets on to him. Oh, I didn't realize that was part two. <laughs> yeah, a I, I like him on his back better sure. because he's he's stroking his air dick. <laughs> And he's going, you ready to go all night? You ready to go all night? You ready to go all night, baby? Yeah. Are you ready to go and all by night? The way, Get there's on. no one helping him. He's just doing it by He's himself. just doing it, laying <laughs> laying in a restaurant, laying on a floor in a restaurant. Yeah, you ready to go all night? It's like the it's like the most X rated charades game you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And of, of course, and we all know what the joke is. Okay, all right, get on. You ready to go? And I, get off! Get off! Get off! Oh, and then he strokes himself, <laughs> and we all we all erupt in laughter. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know uh, didn't know why that's uh, funny. He did uh, he did deaf rat guy, and I got uh, the room came down when uh, I laid an assist. Jeff, you'll probably remember yeah. this. He did uh, you know he did the standard. We got a clean up those uh, pumpkins or the thetas are going to do a dance on our faces. But uh, then there's th- then there's one where he just sits on a chair and looks sullen. He just sits there and looks sullen. And I know what's going on. That's my cue. So I get on my feet. I open the fake door and I go, Mav, the party's raging downstairs. Everyone's here. What are you doing sitting in your frat house room all alone? And then he pauses and he goes, sometimes I get a little bummed out about my hearing <laughs> and then the place, goes, the place yeah. goes insane i don't know why it's so funny classic, it classic classic hey do you have uh it's up on my screen but uh with you and cousin sal how about the incredible moment where the tom cruise negotiated a peace settlement That's between right. you and cousin sal this was uh one of the highlights of our friendship um I was on Dancing with the Stars, as I know you were, and, and you know, Adam, firsthand how attached you can be 
to your dance partner and to the idea of uh, performing something uh, out of your normal comfort zone. You know, I learned the cha-cha-cha, mm-hmm. and I got hurt. And the last rehearsal, my partner, Edita, had her nails done, and she sliced my cornea at the <sighs> camera rehearsal uh, hours before the live appearance. Feels and, intentional. You know, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was devastating. And uh, Jimmy said, uh, you have to dance. If you can dance, you're a, you'll be a hero. And I, I, you know, I had an eye patch on, and I went out there, and and Warren Sapp and the rest of the cast wore eye patches out of solidarity, wow. as did my family. <laughs> and uh, uh, all eyes were on me, uh, even though I only had one good one at the time. And I'd already uh, uh, competed against Cloris Leachman and Kim Kardashian. And uh, I was really having this great, like, sort of primetime moment. And I danced relatively poorly, but considering I couldn't see and I was a little disoriented from a long day in the emergency room, I danced pretty well. The next day, the results come in, and Sal must have somehow known that I was eliminated. But he texted me an hour before the show and said, you're safe. So I tell my partner, we're safe. I'm very confident now. I'm a little got some swagger out there. I know that either Kim Kardashian's going home or Cloris Leachman or one of the other sort of, uh, you know, not as good as Brooke Burke dancers. And, of course, it was a prank. I was caught off guard. I was so mad. They eliminated me. And I said, speak in a ballroom. These pants are tight. I'm out of here. And I walked off pissed off. And, you know, when you get eliminated, you get driven limo right to Jimmy Kimmel Live, live on ABC. And uh, I knew by then (laughs) that Sal had pranked me. And I was so mad at him. I didn't talk to him for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I didn't want to let it disrupt all my friendships. So I continued to go to Jimmy's house. Uh, for football on Sundays, and there was a lot of friction. There was a lot of tension. I was really hurt. Uh, Sal wasn't backing down. Uh, even you know the the guys were pretty much divided on who to support in this situation. Uh, I don't know which side you fell on, Adam. Wow. Uh, well, how Just say, been, say Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Say Jeff. I'm always Team Jeff. Everyone knows. Hey, having Jeff. been through the horror. Check the windbreaker. Uh, Team Jeff. Yeah, it says on the back. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it was Christmas time. Tom Cruise showed up at Jimmy's house uh, with cupcakes. His mom had made cupcakes, I believe. And he came with his mom. And she was a lovely woman. And we were all kind of like, you know, having a little bit of a, there was some holiday cheer, some goodwill in the room. And I believe it was Sarah Soberman who was there at the time, got up on a coffee table and said, um, oh, no, Sal, Sal whispered to me, why don't we let Tom Cruise, who's played so many judges in movies and lawyers in judge. movies, why don't we let him decide what we should do to wow. to fix this between us. Cruise court. And yeah. Food, what's that? Yeah. Cruise court. Cruise court. And, yeah. Cruise court. I like it. And Sarah got up and pleaded my case. <laughs> I believe Jimmy or Bill Simmons uh, pleaded a uh, Sal's case. And uh, Tom Cruise heard us out, spent considerable time thinking about it. His <laughs> mom chastised us for cursing. Yes. <laughs> And you want to tell the rest of the story? Well, you know what I, 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 I was drunk by then because that took place at the end of the oh. end of the, the the end of the second game. Oh, I mean, boy. I'd been I'd been pounding beers mm-hmm. since uh, 10 a.m. But I do. I did have a joke in my act a million years ago, which was on this subject, which is um, if you're Tom Cruise and there's some rumors swirling around Hollywood that you may be gay and you'd like to stop those rumors by going to the man show guy's house to have some brewskis and watch football. Leave your mom and the cupcakes at home. <laughs> Cause I Probably remember I answered idea. the door. It was just his mom standing there with a big thing of cupcakes and Tom Cruise. It was surreal. That's gonna blow your fucking mind. It blew my mind. Yeah. Sorry. And, you know, at that point we were, we were all like making it in Hollywood, but we weren't big stars. We didn't know a lot of big stars. So, we really, you know, Tom came in with some gravitas, mm-hmm. and Tom 
you know, asked us some follow-up questions. They could hear the, <laughs> the quivering emotion in my voice. They could see a little bit of the guilt in Sal's eyes. And after conferring with his mom, Tom uh, came back, Judge Tom came back and said that uh, he thought that he had unnecessarily hurt my feelings, caught me off guard in a big break in a show business moment, and that Sal should apologize. Wow. Uh, Sound. Sal, I do a very by the meekly, rules. Sal very meekly apologized and kind of mumbled through it, and Tom made him repeat it louder. Wow. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, in the end, um, we took a picture where we all kind of shook hands over a, a, a football. We're, on Sunday. Uh, yeah, we're looking at it right now. Now, which one is Tom Cruise? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I do remember, it reminds me of Tom Cruise is holding the football. I did make him throw me the pass so I could do my shit touchdown dance in the living room, which may have offended his mom. May have I offended remember. His, I, he stood I, up and I, threw me a tight one. I caught it in front of everybody. And did he did, ever come back? Uh, several times, I'm sure. I don't know. I, I'd have to check the logbook. Log. <laughs> hey, now look uh, at that picture, Adam. I mean, clearly uh, Tom Cruise has aged a lot, and I look as good as I've ever looked. Uh, yeah, you, know, you look better than you there? did, and Tom looks like uh, he's just been out in the sun drinking yeah. uh, Everclear. <laughs> uh, Jeff, let me give you a plug. Website, roastmastergeneral.com. Go there for all the uh, upcoming uh, dates and shows and shoot him a tweet at real Jeffrey Ross. And Jeff, uh, as soon as you finalize the next roast, come back and uh, spread the news on this program. I will super spread the next roast <laughs> on your show, Adam. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. We'll talk Love soon. Love you guys. Love you. All right. Yeah, I always say uh, Jeff's a very sincere guy for the roast master, and he yeah. sincerely had his feelings hurt uh, by cousin Sal. Yeah, it's a little sensitive. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, Team Jeff. Team Jeff. Team Jeff. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let me tell you about uh, Team. Uh, oh, Check wants to weigh in. Mm. Well, sorry, here, I just right? I just well, uh, I wanted to weigh in while while Ross was oh, on there. Oh, sorry. A couple things. Well, we hold on, hold in. on. Let me let's just let's talk about when you come in the studio right after the break. All right, let's we'll let's just go. pick uh, it up. Uh, all right, that's a choice. That's one way we can do it. <laughs> all okay, right. fine. Talk to you soon. Yeah, yeah. All right, Tommy John this summer. Soak up the sun, not the sweat. Tommy John, cool cotton fabric. Two to three times cooler than regular cotton. Get a pair of new Tommy John underwear and let your buns breathe, man. Oh, Gina. Yeah, some on. nice. Uh, sure. oh. oh, like a like a forest green no, or navy blue. Navy, navy blue. blue. They're yes. white undies, Gina. They just have been washing quite some. Been a while. Those that, are navy blue. That's yes, moss. Uh, yeah, Tommy John, man, it's so good. Dozens of comfort innovations. Breathable, lightweight, moisture wicking fabric. Like I said, like Dawson said, you know, jump in the pool at night, hang them out on the railing, and pop them on the next morning. They're dry or just go out and work up a little lather and just kind of walk it off once you get back into the air conditioning. They just dry on you. They don't have customers. They have fanatics, and you'll never go back to what you're currently wearing. Best pair you'll ever wear. It's free. Guaranteed. Right, Dawson? Right now, get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Adam for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. All right. Quick break. Back with uh, Dave Damashek right after this. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy, Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. He hate this king. Stay away from the kings. If you said the jerk. He hates these cans! Stay away from the cans! You're correct. Now, back to the show. The great Dave Damashek in studio. Podcast minus three extra points with Cousin Sal on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to better podcasts. Good to see you, Dave. It's been uh, like a day and a half. 
Hello, Adam. You're looking well. <laughs> you look well, too. <laughs> nice to see you bald. Now, off the air, you're going to tell us about uh, your mustache and your beard. Yeah, the beard yeah, looks th- different. Then we'll get to my POV on that uh, magnificent day when Tom Cruise showed up at uh, at the Kimmel Football Sunday. But, yes, thank you for the plug of those shows. It's ace. We're a month away from football. I know. Oh, it's a glorious time. Hopes are running high for all 30. Well, 31, because we know the Houston Texans are going to be. But everybody else, <gasps> hopes are running high. Yes, I uh, I had the occasion to catch up with an old pal of mine, um, and uh, he's a gay man. Mm-hmm. And um, he said to me, I noticed he has an all-white beard, but I said, am I seeing things correctly that your mustache is much bushier and fuller than the rest of your mm-hmm. beard? And he said, yes, that's very big in the gay community now, oh. is you're supposed to grow it bushy. And he said, I, you know, he's a man of my advanced age, and he said, I do very well with young men as a result of oh. this. And I said, listen, I, I, I've been around long enough to understand that the gay community is six months to five mm-hmm. years ahead of the rest of society in terms mm-hmm. of fashion. I'm going to get on this now. I may get a little bit of pushback, but who's going to wind up in the winter circle? Dave Damish. And it's have good, the young men been hitting on look. you? It's a good look, yeah. No, you know, it's funny. I'm glad. I, I just told that story to somebody the other day. I once went to a party at Allen Ball, the guy, you know, oh, six feet under guy. Me. Oh, American Beauty. Yeah. yeah, an American Beauty. Right. Well, he uh, apparently was known to throw big parties that were filled with young men who he would court, you know, mm-hmm. at his at his uh, palatial estate in the Hollywood Hills, if I remember correctly. I went to a party there and there were no exaggeration. There were 200 young men all there. Very few, if any, women around there. And we left after about 20 minutes. It wasn't for me. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. for it wasn't for us. Mm. So me and uh, it was uh, Dan Dratch was there with me. In mm. fact, that's who I was just recounting this with. I said, do you remember that? Am I exaggerating? He said, no, it was absolutely, there were no women there. It was very strange. And we left after 20 minutes. And I remember thinking then, and I still to this day, I'm offended. I didn't get hit on by one man. Mm. Not one man. Mm-hmm. Not handsome enough for one. 200 coxmen. Mm. Not one. Perhaps looked away a damage. You check. exuded so much heterosexual masculine no. energy. I don't want to waste my like, time. You don't want to waste my time. That's a no. calorie. Here's a hypothetical I just uh, thought of. Um, so it's it's torture for the women because the gay guys keep after themselves, you know, physically, yes. and they mm-hmm. don't have the hairy backs. The and, income, and, the, and there's the physical mm-hmm. side oh, of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're doing the skin and oh the moisturizer, the BMI, exfoliating the and all that hair. kind of, everything's there. Big mustaches. Career sure. oriented. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then it started like, kept going down the road with it in my head. Like they love design. They like mm-hmm. decorating. They like doing yeah. architecture, all that kind Tourism. of stuff. Uh, Gina, yeah. no one likes a musical like you. Oh my God. Good luck That's getting the straight guy to accompany right. you. Mm-hmm. It's all there. Yes. And you go, wow. So what a, it's almost torture mm-hmm. in a sense that if this you went to that specimen. party as a single uh, woman, you'd see all these guys that look great yeah. in, in board shorts and who wanted to go see uh, Pippin with Liza you. Liza with a Z. Liza with a Z. Knew all the words. Yeah. Not Lisa with an S. No. Listen. How did you do that? <laughs> I'm gay. Because <laughs> Liza with a Z goes z- nuts. Yeah. I have goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. I can't uh, believe you know that. I have, listen, we think we've proven with my velodrome <laughs> and uh, many other subjects, I, I cast a wide net when it comes to knowledge. A wide you gay, sure net. Do. <laughs> a, a super gay, gay net. net. <laughs> yeah, not a gill net, a gay net. Right. All right, so torture for you. Yes. But then let's uh, flip the coin here. What about the lesbians? Mm. And it's like, well, you know, uh, camping. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to the rodeo, <laughs> a dip, <laughs> you know, all, all the stuff trips. that dudes yeah. want to do, you know, woodworking. flannel, woodworking. <laughs> Think about Fishing. it. You, you, you right. know, who, do you, who could you make a stronger argument for? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so the cis hetero among us are the ones that are shit out of luck. Yeah. Well, it is finally I, it someone's is, taking up our cause. Right? It's just it's, it is interesting that they both sort of did a thing that looked like it was there to taunt. Yeah. 
hmm. the heterosexuals among us. You're absolutely right. Grad and I would. The bottom line is, if Grad had been at that party, she and I would be married now. That's, That's right. You know? true. Like we both would have been sore losers and been yeah. like, "All right, I mean, this is what we're. Yeah. This is it. You know, sloppy seconds over here. So, uh, you had thoughts on uh, the Tom Cruise story? Well, I just wanted to color in a couple more details. You got to the one. You opened the door for Tom Cruise, and it was a stunner to all of us that Tom Cruise was there. Um, obviously with his mom no less but within six minutes and that might even be generous to you adam carolla within six six minutes of a list superstar tom cruise and his mom showing up at jimmy kimmel's adam carolla was uh was doing his poop uh touchdown day <laughs> pantomime and, poop and, and it was poop. so surreal the whole thing was <laughs> well surreal. you also have to understand that jimmy had a step down living yes. room so you could stand up on the platform oh. and if you step down and got in front of the screen yeah, it was amp- It was an eyes. amphitheater. <laughs> it was meant to. It was a room that was meant to be performed. You'll be surprised to learn that wasn't the first time Adam took the, sit- uh, the took the stage for all of us what? in the middle of a game. Um, man, let me let me th- Ace. You know, no bigger fan here. Can we watch the fourth quarter though? And then we'll. How about our overtime? Will be this uh, this take on uh, the newest ad for Hack. <laughs> And you see another CBS hack to become a rape. Yeah, all right. They say, just after the two-minute warning. Can we get through? No. And we, we always loved it. Always loved it. I get it. Now, once I was talking at, or on that day, I was talking to, speaking of handsome, to one John Hamm. Oh, you know, the, boy. the object now of every woman's affection Oof, in the 21st uh, yes. century, a man's man and all that. But he looked like one of us, you know, had a couple days growth, had a dirty old St. Louis Blues That's ball cap okay. on. But I'm talking to him. I And uh, aware, I am in a position that literally millions of women would trade to, to, to have a moment like this with John Hamm. And then, through the arch of the doorway, I saw in a pristine black pea coat with a with a, a matching black shirt underneath and perfectly coiffed hair and a clean-shaven face with a halo of light around him, Tom Cruise. Ham's a handsome devil, but he, he couldn't hold a candle to Cruise. I swooned! And then Corolla did his poop dance. And by the way, Sal was right. That was, one of, that was one of the more ridiculous episodes. I think we can agree. Why was I, I still to this day? What was Jeff Ross that mad about, or for that surprise that Sal would do? I, you really hurt my feelings, cousin Sal. Like, oh, what? You well, hurt, first hurt off, your if, feelings. If Sal texts you anything, right. just think the opposite. Yes, of course. You you had to know in advance you were on the chopping block because right. Sal reached out to you to tell you you were safe. He would have said nothing, or what if he did text? Think the opposite. That's uh, that's the way I would approach it. Also, um, I do remember that day he came in. Tom's mom is a is is a dear lady, mm-hmm. and you can see they kind of uh, kind of facially resemble resemble each other as well. Um, but yeah, those were some crazy times back then. That was good. Everyone showing up at Jimmy's house and. Uh, Tilting a few and having a having a good time. We have a nice time when we get together at your warehouse, don't we? I agree. Uh, When's Cruz coming by? I, I was gonna. Say. I was going to. Well, we don't get Cruz. We get Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Brad's the craziest of all uh, Sal's friends. Hollywood elites, same to me. <laughs> yes, six of one. Yeah, he was he was covered in my roast uh, of uh, of cousin Sal. I yeah, it was a, a wonderful night. On. Yeah, we had uh, a great time. I'm sure you've discussed it already, um, but uh, yeah, wonderful half century celebrate uh, celebration of uh, Sal a half century cool. in Corolla roasted him. It was kind of like a. A stern whack pack, but Sal has his own gang, like mm. Sal's pals of, mm-hmm. of misfits or whatever. And uh, you, I were you flattered when you got the invitation? And then when you realize, like, this is who I'm performing with, like now, now it's a slap in my face. So, Sal, Sal's friends are legitimately nuts, and the first night, it, I think it was the first night I, uh, the second night I spent at Sal's house because uh, the first time me and Jimmy went to New York, it was like, oh, my Sal, Sal's over there. He'll pick us up. We'll stay at his place. We'll go a couple days early. I think what it was is K Rock was paying for the hotel from Sunday night to Monday, you know, to Friday for work that we we're doing over there. But we want to go in on Thursday and we need a place to stay. So I stayed at Sal's and, uh, Night number one, or morning number one, I slept on a 
day bed that was by the laundry room, which is, it, it had piles and piles of dirty clothes on it. And I just crawled underneath them. And uh, Jimmy's, sorry, Sal's mom thought I was Jimmy. Right. So she dove on me in the morning. Ah, he's here, he's here. And it, and, <laughs> but the next night, I was, I was uh, the next morning, it was um, Cow. C- Cousin Sal's friend, Cow. Cow. Who, wh- you, you know how he woke me up? How's that? Let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> he walked in the room at like 6.30. And we went oh, to bed yes. at like 3.45. He walked in at 6.30. And he's like, Gucci, Gucci, Goo. Gucci, Gucci. He's like tickling my feet. He's a 35-year-old man. <laughs> like, I it's all I up. wanted at Alan Ball's party. <laughs> Just one man to pick me on my feet. That would have been enough. I, 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 you know, I've been peed on a lot, so I'm not easily offended. <laughs> but I still thought, wow, he's tickling a, a stranger. He's, he's, he woke me up pre seven a.m. to to tickle me by going Gucci. What a collection he, he a of weirdos! Goo. What an absolute. Uh, I mean, it, it is really, and that was really hanging out at Jimmy's too on football Sundays. They, it, it, you talk about casting a wide net. You had literally, you know. You had Adam Carolla, you had John Hamm, Sarah Silverman, Tom Cruise periodically, Tom Cruise's mom, Randy, Brad, you know, yeah, I mean, really just a, a, a big range of humanity mm-hmm. all gathered there. And so it was this weekend once again. I, I felt blessed. And you, know, you don't leave off uh, one of the, the great, most captivating personalities. We had the chance to see Maverick. The deaf mm-hmm. rat guy. Yeah, that's we right. About that. yeah, yeah. Yes, he was covered in segment one, <laughs> doing the porn auditions on the floor of the restaurant. Never forget the, the bus boys came in through the closed doors and stood alongside the wall. I was fascinated because does it translate? It never if translates. Never, no, these guys. <laughs> were in hysterics. Oh, they they, were. they thought it was hysterical. And I also am then reminded that uh, Norm McDonald once made Maverick do it for Mike Scully, uh, you know, one of the creators of uh, of The Simpsons. Simpsons. And he uh, and Mike Scully apparently was downright mad. What the hell is that? Don't do oh, it. Get he did the it. Range is the best all the of reactions. All of, I'm gonna go with the bus boys. Yeah, all of our executives at Comedy Central were middle aged house frows. <laughs> and when they showed up at the after party, it's like Josh do it. Show Debbie Liebling. And all these middle-aged women are like standing around. Like, get down on the floor. You want to go all night? You want to go all night? She's like standing there with her kid or something. Yeah, the best part is nobody else understanding what's going on. But I'm glad the bus boys got a laugh yeah. out of it. Yeah. I Meantime, I got some heat. Uh, people thought it was weird that uh, there was a baby there. It was a six-week-old baby. And I asked if I could smell it. Babies smell delicious. Why? Smell is that a weird yeah. thing to ask me? I smell. In the age of COVID, they're not going to hand you the baby to hold and they're not going to let to do that but close second i can smell this you this is a total stranger well i mean i knew one of the parents a yeah. little bit so I, I, anyway, I got a lot of heat i'm like well was, so i was very strange that you did that, that <laughs> that's was a very, very that was very unusual david that's, like, a, very, was, that's well, a very larry david moment for you <laughs> I don't know why. Like it broke I the, the social contract. They smell delicious, like a nice cookie. No, you know? I I agree. A woman's breasts feel wonderful, but if you see one in, at a party or just someone, yeah. you you know one of the parents, maybe you don't just go up and ask for a squeeze. You could think it. Yeah. Okay. You just can't a, say that's it. That's a powerful analogy, Ball. Thank <laughs> you hey, for that. I'm, I'm going the other way here. I wish I'd sniff the baby. <laughs> I do. Well, I'm I was not, in I'm the not sorry with the baby. Yeah, exactly. I wish I'd given it a sniff. Oh, what a time, Ace. What a great time. I feel like a lucky devil once again to get to sit in a cabana with the likes of you or in a podcast studio. All those fun, Some of the funniest people on the face of the earth. What a great time it was. Laughed and laughed and laughed some more. Well, now we have a hypothetical, Dave. Oh. So we're going to come down to earth. Let's get serious. All right, a couple weeks back... I was uh, talking to Mike Lynch. We we're working on an upcoming book of mine, and uh, we stumbled into this sort of hypothetical. And, and, and you, I don't know if you're uniquely qualified to answer this, but I you always bring a unique perspective to mm. these things. So the question is this. Do you sexually take one lover who can be uh, an eight, max eight? You get an eight. And, you know, one to ten. Uh, or do you go for the threesome, but maximum combined scores 12? <laughs> and everybody's answered. 
I, I, I mean, I've always uh, pretty consistently judge. I hope not too harshly the women that you may have seen me with over the years. You can count them on two fingers. But um, the uh, I'm, I've always been a quantity, a quality over quantity guy. You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 I never. But this is I never a hypothetical where you're just going to have an experience. You're not going <clears> to <throat> move to Utah and start a family. Eight. Give me the eight. Always You'll take the eight. Always the eight. All right. Stand. I Let's think, uh, Chris. I think we need to adjust this now. And I don't. I need to add a point. Well, or two. Like you already did. did. Yeah. No. The, the, it it was a be, ten. It no, no, it wasn't it. It was ten, mm-hmm. and then it looks like you added two points. In oh, did we go? Though. Yeah. Oh, because, we went. Oh, sorry. Remember, added. You adjusted for the female version. Oh, that's right. I adjusted for the female version. Yeah, I think we got to go twelve. But what would it take? What if <laughs> I went thirteen? I I don't I don't know. I've never craved. I don't know why. I never have craved two women at once. Perhaps that uh, says something about how I regard my love making. I yeah I I I make no secret of the fact. And many not but again, many women, this but is a many, hypothetical. You know, I'm a surprisingly to... powerful lover. <laughs> um, but this is a this is something to just say you did it. I see. you know what I mean. I see. This is a bucket list kind of thing. I mean, if, if if you're, I feel like you're pushing. I am. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to sweeten the oh. pot a little bit. Really, what, stake, what, yeah. what you're looking for is like you know, speaking of cousin Sal. What the bookies do is they start moving the line around a little until they I can see. get you know even money on on both teams. You know, I'm moving the line a little bit. If, and then the question is, how would you break down a twelve? <laughs> I well definitely I'm giving them the same so if it's if we were to go up to 15 and I would go I can't s- do 15. Come on. That's being greedy. I mean I'm, listen I I'd really like to see you do 15 I, I was, I'll, I, 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 I didn't offer anyone 12. Yeah. The I'm guys upstairs are going to go. If one gets go, out, Dave, the offer is 15. This does not, I want you to understand, this does not leave the podcast studio. Mm-hmm. What happens here, I understand that you're not in the business. All right, let's of, just say, okay. let's say 13, but no half points. You can't break it into a six and a half and a six and a half. I, then I guess I'm going uh, 76. It's mm-hmm. the new sexual position. To mm-hmm. Dave's uh, with a seven and a six on either side of him. Mm-hmm. 76, you know? All right. I'm going to do, I, I guess that's what I have to do. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I guess I'm a snob. My wiener, at least, is a snob. I don't. I you know. I I, I wouldn't want to go three or four or four, even yeah. five. That seems five. that's the the, the general consensus mm-hmm. is is that. Is that right? No, but yeah. But well, I, I I've seen the other side. It's it's never in all my years. It's never it, it never ceases to surprise me because you hear about those things like that guy is wild and he's had the threesomes. What you learn is. That their standards are much lower. That's the cheat code, you know. Mm. It's it's also like, why are you so good? So, it's, like, it's like Wayne Gretzky. Got to keep taking the shots. You never make one that you don't take. Like, yeah, that's what coxmen do, and they take shots at any walking creature too. Like that's mm-hmm. it's like, oh well, you're betting a three. So, am I supposed to be impressed by that? Yeah, give me the high score, ladies. Mm. Agree. Thank you. All right, uh, now on to some. Uh, talk that I was trying to get some traction with at uh, Sal's party, but I just feel like it fell on deaf ears. Uh, getting the podium race. <laughs> you are 100% wrong because Sal and I talked about that on Extra Points just yesterday. Oh, that we, good. I, I, he brought it up and I said I 100% think uh, Corolla is right on this one. Yeah, we'll just show you the picture of the uh, 68 uh, Mexico City Olympics with uh, Tommy Smith. What is this, communist China? <clears throat> Second and third place or even Steven? Not in my book. No, I know. Yes. Now we're breaking Now we're breaking them in half. Yeah, it looks like, now you can see the numbers on thing, but when they when they go in closer on that shot, it There's just no looks, way to know. looks like the guy who got, uh, yeah, you you, you show a hundred people this picture and they'd go, yeah, the two black guys got first and second. And then the little white guy from Australia, he got in there. He got third. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, well, that was eye opening for me as uh, somebody who fancies himself, a, a, himself a diehard sports fan. It took Adam Carolla in the Lord's year 2021 to tell me that the Australian guy, in fact, finished second. Yeah, it's crazy. It's I, like, uh, Dave, you probably know this, but the uh, famous Miracle on Ice, not the gold medal game. In fact, well, I uh, know that. You, yeah, you, uh, I tell that people, people that one, right. Yeah, the U.S. had to go on to beat Finland, a very good Finland. And, and in fact, we're, was losing 2 nothing in that game. They got, imagine, imagine that. They beat the Soviet Union, yeah, and then they lose to, yeah. to the Finns. <laughs> oh, I always thought bad. it was Sweden, but it was Finland. Yeah. 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 Um, hey, sorry, Finland. Is that where Frozen Glass is from? 
Ah, oh, Fruz and Glaja, Capo Caco, Shocky <laughs> Jacques Louis. It's great names in sports, but all a precursor to what's been going on in these Olympics. Do yourself a favor. Have you been seeing some of these names out there? No, I haven't well, seen them. Well, uh, there was an American person who just won a, a medal named Moo. <laughs> name Moo? Moo. Or just Moo. Her, her last name was Moo. Oh, wow. Or maybe Mew, but I'm pretty sure it was Moo. <laughs> Don't back down now. <laughs> Moo it is. Moo it is. Moo it shall stay. What's she winning? I don't know. I don't know. Is that, that's not crazy. Crazy. As a girl. Adam, Adam, not, not, her, not mm-hmm. as a, her uh, childhood. Yeah, it'd be, tough. <laughs> be a shame if it was for like the uh, the shot put or something. You don't want the that. The hammer throw. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, think, oh 800, 800 meter. Oh, wow. So says uh, yeah. Max Zapata. Uh, have we been doing of the Americans? I don't know. Where are we at with basketball in the Americans? We're doing all right. We beat Spain um, most recently. It's not, but, you know, I, I, I always said about that, if we can get serious. I have, uh, I've always felt that we should have in 92. We lose in 88. The the men's uh, it should never happen. We should always win basketball. If nothing else, we we should always win men's basketball. But then we lose in '88, so we say like, "All right, world, now we're gonna give you what for? We're sending Magic, and we're sending Bird, and we're sending Michael, and all those guys, and we're gonna whip the hell out of you so that there's no mistake who's the best." And that's exactly what they did. That should have been enough. That mm-hmm. should have been it. Like Diana. don't don't make us do it. Do you want? It? Oh, you think you're good? You've Spain, seen the worst. Brazil. Right. You want to get the hell beat? Well. We'll do it again. Keep on, keep it up with the yap. Instead, we just keep sending them, and then we eventually lost, and now here we are, mortal, like uh, like the rest of the world. I don't care for it. All right, we got uh, Dead or Alive to play with uh, Shaq. First, I'll tell you about J.B. Weld, world's strongest bond. Pros have trusted it for over 50 years. But why hire a pro when J.B. Weld makes it easy to look like a pro yourself? We're proud to have J.B. Weld Epoxy Adhesive as a sponsor. I personally know the owner. DIY projects, uh, auto, crafts, plumbing, marine, and more. Use on metal, wood, plastic, cla- uh, glass, I should say, ceramics, and you can keep it in your kitchen drawer, your craft supplies in the garage. I use it to fix uh, Sonny's tennis shoe. I use it to fix a stone threshold in front of my house. I use it to fix Natalia's frozen face roller thing. <laughs> and don't sleep on the chair pads in the dining room. Oh, That's yeah. That's why I used it. That's why you used it. J.B. Weld acquired Herculiner, the original DIY truck bed liner. So if you're looking for the world's strongest truck bed liner, Herculiner has you covered. Right, Dawson? J.B. Weld is available at jbweld.com, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, AutoZone, Advance Auto Parts, Napa, O'Reilly, Amazon, Michaels, and more. And remember, J.B. Weld epoxy products are proudly made in the USA. J.B. Weld, world's strongest bond. All right, we'll take a quick break. Back with Dead or Alive with Shaq right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace man, I've never seen an episode of The Love Boat. Probably just a little too young for have had that to have had it in my wheelhouse. But listening to your show has helped me with a line from a very popular movie that is in my wheelhouse that I never understood. It was from Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. He comes up to the millionaire's house and says. Hello, Captain Steubing, Howard Gopher and Doc. Never knew what he meant. Had no idea what the heck a Gopher or Doc was. Uh, but listening to uh, your segment helped me figure it out. Thanks a lot, sir. Love the show. Take care. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Love me some love boat. And we forgot, Shaq, but uh, we hadn't brought it up in a while. But... Um... We forgot, talk, reminiscing about uh, Kimmel and Football Sunday, we all remember where we were when our own Mike Dawson was banned. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask about when Cruz was there. Was it was it a Chargers bye week, or did you have the game on? <laughs> I know, it was a real shame you missed that one. <laughs> so you could have shared your calzone recipe with him. <laughs> Nothing be better. Good. I know we've told that a million he times. Just, he, to... bought, he brought an unapproved calzone, and Jimmy banned him. I was going to say, with well, Jimmy's nothing. No, 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 no. It was, it was, it were, it, I think it was one magnificent Sunday. It was, I think both of these happened in the same one. He walks in, looks at the big screen. Now, Kimmel has, what, did he have five games on at any given time? Yeah, he had a he wall walks of in, screens. He's like, 
Where my charger? I love how the story evolves. <laughs> they, the story has gotten so much your, better over time. Your char your chargers are on their buy, Dawson. <laughs> Number one fan, yeah. um, and uh, <laughs> that was noted by the partisan football crowd. <laughs> that was strike one, and then the calzone came out. You know, I mean, it was, it was already. That was I, mean, I think yeah. that's. I think that's a fair yeah. judgment to make on, <laughs> when we're gathering to watch football. Um, and then uh, Kimmel, the ultimate host, you know, working his own brick oven pizza, making a churning out pies for us to enjoy all through the day. And uh, I, I find myself uh, standing there talking to Kimmel as Mike Dawson approaches to recommend some uh, some ingredients for how he likes to make a calzone. Jimmy Kimmel did not like that very much mm. at all. Especially. Simply told Kimmel, I don't like ricotta. <laughs> but what did you like instead? It's a standard pizza cheese, a mix, mix of nah. mozzarella and jack. Standard <laughs> fucking right. pizza cheese. You cheese. recommended Jack that. Cheese to Kimmel. A, a, a mixture <laughs> of mozzarella <laughs> and Jack. Yeah, but you keep that close to the vest. You know what I mean? Yeah, Apparently, you know, yes, I agree. You don't if I could, if I could, if I could do it all over banned. again, I wouldn't got change a thing. For that. I think, I mean, it seems harsh from the outside looking <laughs> in, but the man's a pizza hole after all. He's yeah. whipping up delicious by like, oh, no, you, you should know, though, Jimmy, that uh, I put a little <laughs> spicy pepper jack really will make <laughs> See, now it's spicy pepper jack. Now it's yeah, cheese whiz. <laughs> Uh, little cottage you're cheese. You're perpetuating a lie, Dave. <laughs> Keep going. But don't uh, you story say, keeps getting uh, better. Wait, you've got to appreciate the, the, uh, the consistency because do you know that when they were in the Netherlands, Dawson, they went into a pub and Dawson ordered a pina colada. So this is like an eccentric, <laughs> adorable, this is like one of Dawson's adorable eccentricities. Thanks, Cheetah. You're welcome. Yeah. And, <laughs> Kim will disagree. You know, I don't know what the... <laughs> I, I don't know what tradition is in the Netherlands, but I ordered just like a whiskey neat, but the person had to wait. You know, they had to go back there and well, where's the blender? And approval? <laughs> they had to. Yeah, they, the they were going to bring them both out oh, at the same right. time, and it took them 25 minutes to figure Mark out. Mark Hender was like, not freezing, Elijah. <laughs> not right. I heard about you and your spicy jack. You I know? so look forward to every time Dave's on the show. <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. I, you know, to be fair, uh, Dawson, I, I think it was the mix that got you. You know what I mean? The mozzarella, I, f I feel like Jimmy could have kept walking. You know, but when you when you mix the jack in, well, for with somebody the mix, who knows I think pizza that's so stopped. well, you think that they'd know. I don't know if I cheese. admire it or, or if I want to make sure I keep clear by fifty feet in any direction of Mike Dawson that he continues all these years mm. later to challenge Kimmel on his pizza making. Can you imagine, Gina, some version of this with women? <laughs> The banning part? Yeah, being banned no. because you didn't no. know what day Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was right. on. Or no. I mean, you had a calzone you suggestion. Get, you get playfully teased every time you showed up and everyone would give you a hug afterwards. But it's not, not blackballed. No. Okay. My old insane. man, Aunt Roberta, once came with us to Three River Stadium for a Steelers regular season game. Obviously, she wasn't making the playoff cut, but um, she came out for probably an early September ball game. Um, and uh, the Steelers lost. Banned. Aunt Roberta never oh, allowed to use bad never, luck. Never, bad, never, bad allowed, wow. never allowed to use the tickets again. I want to revisit you banning uh, Bill Simmons from the uh, Roto League, <laughs> from the Fantasy <laughs> Football League. And, I'm mad. <laughs> and the, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> I didn't want to be in your dumb league anyway. Well, we all know, I mean, we've talked about before, in their league, uh, when you win, you get to ban somebody for a year, which already is male territory. Right. It's not, a, not a female Super thing. Well, that was, again, the evil cousin Sal's uh, concoction about a decade ago. Like everybody else, we do our draft as close to the season. We put it on the actual eve of kickoff because Ooh. now there's no wiggle room. You can't find another league. It's too late. <laughs> and if you show up, and also you cannot tip your hand, that's part Part of the thing you right. can't like say like i couldn't pull sal aside at the at his birthday weekend and be like hey sal you know make other plans you ain't gonna make the cut mm -hmm. friend you're, mm -hmm. you're 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 going down this time you have to hold it until the eve of the draft until the eve of the game of uh, this regular season and uh and in front of all your, your oh, friend, in front of all your friends mm -hmm. you uh 
you get your head lopped off, and it's a humiliation. <laughs> you think like, ah, how, would it really be that bad? Like, it, I, it, it is. It is. Uh, it really is among the more profound shamings that I've seen. I watched once uh, Elliot uh, Blute. Blut, he came in. He's a bald headed. Jimmy's old friend. Yeah, he's a he's a six foot three, hundred and forty pound uh, attorney. Um, like I say, uh, not unlike uh, bald Brian there. You know, no hair on top of his head. And so this figure with his four eyes and otherwise, John Hamm runs over. He was directing an episode of Mad Men that day, so he was a little late, but we couldn't start the draft until it was t- until John Hamm was there, and uh, Hamm arrived, and we said, okay, Elliot, your turn. It's it's time. You won the league last year. Who's out this year? And he announced it was John Hamm, and John Hamm, I don't care what he says now, <laughs> did not like it, and he did not, and he did not think it was funny or cute or otherwise. He had a fresh beer in his hand. He drank it in .7 seconds, slammed it down, and was gone into the wow, night. Wow. Disappeared. See, that's the question. Do can I mean not that this John Hamm probably gave a shit, but can no, friendships, he can, I, he but can against this dude, can friendships be sustained after that? Are they are they uh, irrevocable? Well, we'll see. Because I, I, you know, Simmons like S- Simmons is bit for way too long in in, uh, in this analyst's book was was like some lame mind game. Whoever won the he was like. I hope you kick me out. I was, that was the whole off season. I hope you kick me out because I hate fantasy football anyway. It ruins the game for me. I don't like having to do it. It's dumb. And uh, people would somehow take that bait. Mm-hmm. Not Damashek. <laughs> Damashek, uh, well, because of COVID, we couldn't be in a room together. So we went on Cameo. To set the table, sorry, you had been kicked out the previous year? or the, Obviously not because you won, but two years prior. No, no, with a, no. With no. a puzzle or Who's something? Who's in this? Sal, Hench, Ham. Hench, Dratch, Ham, Tall John, uh, Tony Barbieri. Uh, producer Trevor, you know, all the, you know, mm-hmm. Craig and Brian, the producers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about 10, 12 people. Yeah, yeah that's probably a room full people of 16. Spots, Mike August is uh, is annually the auctioneer because we do an auction draft and it, it goes horribly every every time. First of all, he eats every, like, his, he, 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 he assumes, he assumes, and like, he's like, uh, you you guys are paying for me. I'm doing work here. Like nobody asked you to do any of this. <laughs> nobody asked you to even show up. Why are you here? And he he's auctioneer, but he eats uh, nine tenths of uh, the pizza and, and drinks nine tenths of the beer um, as payment for goodness knows what. But anyway, he stands up there and he does the he's a, the worst auctioneer in the history of people. He does like going once. Going twice, going three times sold. Like what? What? You didn't let me in, and he never hears like people like twenty six dollars for that, twenty seven like sold. They're like I just said twenty seven. He's the worst at it. But anyway, <laughs> so because we couldn't gather in person this year, and and to answer your question, Bald Brian. Like but there was the a 20- puzzle or something. Right? Well, like that was the, like an like obstacle the, course or something. We have a video of like it. Like the late 70s Pittsburgh Steelers or the Yankees of certain eras. Dave Damashek uh, now counts officially as one of sports' great dynasties. And <laughs> and and Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders draped themselves in, in uh, triumph and success. But only Dave Damashek is a Hall of Famer, an all-time legend in two sports, Connect Four and Fantasy Four. Oh, wow. Three yeah, out of the last right. four. That counts as a dynasty, that's good. right? Yeah, that's strong. All right. This is famously when uh, Sal booted you? Yeah, because Sal was mad. To ask, answer your question about friendships, Gina, I, uh, yeah. I kicked Sal out because I thought he I, I'm a man of justice at the end of the day, and Sal's the one who cooked up this nonsense that has hurt so many feelings. So you and, kicked him out. So I kicked him out. That's right. You're, you're right, I did. And I would do it again, and I might do it again this, right. in a couple weeks. So just to set the table, the draft. <laughs> he came up with it. The draft is on but the But he was e. mad about it. He was mad. He was, but he was not. Sal was not like, ha ha, Valvel, because he called me Valvel because that's my Jewish name for William. But anyway, ha ha, he was mad. And he was mad the whole off season about it. Wow. So, um, <clears throat> now, yeah, Cousin Sal and uh, Jeff Ross, the biggest pranksters on the planet mm-hmm. in the Roastmaster, but thinnish skin when Goes it comes to uh, turning turn about know, being so fair unattra- play. It's an unattractive all quality right, so, in all of them. Uh, so it's on the eve of the beginning of the football season. So when you get booted from this draft, you're probably not going to catch on right. in another league. 
And you don't find out until just before the draft. And the person that wins gets to choose who's getting booted. But no one is ever told. And it's turned into a little bit of a, a ceremony. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, everybody has a little bit around it. And I'll tell you mine. But uh, You wouldn't from just last... show up and go, all right, before we you're get out. started, no. Elliot, pop. you're out. K- you're kicking out Don Draper at the height of Don Draperness was pretty funny by itself. That's it didn't a need a whole lot of other yeah. extraneous stuff. It was like, yeah, handsomest man on the planet being kicked out by <laughs> Elliot Blunt. And he had to get up and walk out of the room was, an, was enough. And you have to get up and leave. <laughs> Don't gild the lily. Yeah, just go. Just just, just do it. Yeah, right. That was good. But this one, I thought as we go into this, Sal calls out a bunch of names and announces me as off the hook. So, oh, good. oh my God. So it's now Same boiled. Same thing that happened to Jeff this Ross. Was, yeah. Was done to you. Exactly. So now it's, oh, wow. So this has come down to it's the Dutch Mook right. versus Tall John. So you threw him out uh, the, the year before. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Who I pick out of the hat are going to compete. To see who was voted out or kicked out. <laughs> Pick two out. One is the Seahawks. Fuck it, better be this dude. <laughs> the other is that fucking dude. Oh! All right, here's what's gonna happen. Our friends at Country Time Lemonade were nice enough to donate a can of uh, lemonade. It's being soda. sponsored now. Um, you guys are gonna put a shot glass on your head and walk it over here without spilling it to this table where a puzzle will wait you. You're going to untie the bag and do the puzzle. All right, so pause it. So everyone in the room thinks it's between these two yeah, dudes. Yeah, of course. Because... And you can feel I'm delighted. Yeah. I'm, I'm cackling extra, like, ha ha, these two dopes. Yeah. The Dutch Mook and Tall John are just guys from the office, from Kimmel, from... Writer know, guys. Writer yeah. guys, yeah. Or you can walk out now. And then we can see <laughs> who was kicked out from there. Well, what right? of them? All right, they have the shot glasses on their head. Getting over there, doing a puzzle. Both guys want it. No one, it's a long season. It's like survivor type puzzle they're putting together. Very close. Son of a bitch. Colors. Oh, my God. And Sarah Shack is in. It's a checkmate on it. Oh, yeah, there's. Oh, my God. It's so good. Farewell, bye, loser. (laughs) (laughs) No dog in the fight. Just bye, loser. Shit, this gotta hurt. What was good was that as we, as I, you know, I was feeling it, as I say, and um, so what's cut out there, thankfully, is that I started uh, to broadcast it, do play by play of it. Tall John takes the lead. Can the moon get him? I'm doing this. Sal must have been in heaven the whole time while I'm doing, while I'm calling the action. Oh, isn't this a, this is the dynamite stuff you came up with, cousin Sal? And then it says on it, I don't. Nobody in the room though. The puzzles are side by side the whole time. At any point, anybody could have seen it says checkmate. See you next fall, Velvel. Uh, I, the puzzles that nobody read it in the room until they both were completed, and then everybody it registered to everybody. Oh, this is all a stinking joke by Sal and checks out, and I have to pick up my stuff and leave. That's so pretty mm-hmm. diabolical. But I'll tell you this very quickly. Dicky from the Boston's is there too. I um. <laughs> Because we couldn't gather physically last year, I went on Cameo, and uh, Simmons' favorite ball player growing up was Freddie Lynn, center fielder oh, for the Boston Red right. Sox. And we had uh, Freddie Lynn. Oh, as a matter of oh, fact, boy. we have it right here. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me laugh so hard. Fred Lynn here from the Boston Red Sox. This is from your friend Dave Damecheck. All right. 2020 uh, has been a rough year for almost everyone. That's about to change right now. Uh, this old 19 wants to tell you. Sorry, Bill. You're out. <laughs> out of the league for this year. Oh, God, you didn't get the start. You're out. Oh. Dave won the fantasy football league and picked you to be out. Now, I'm not sure why he did that. Maybe you're the best guy. And, and his idea was to eliminate the best. So you can think of it that way. But And the Bruins got kicked out of, of their sport, too. So anytime the Bruins are kicked out of anything, it's a good deal for me. Must be good for you as well. So sorry, Bill, from your friend Dave. Out. <laughs> Ready, Lynn, the great. Wow. I don't care because I want it out anyway. He grew up idolizing Fred uh, Lynn. Do you wow. know what that creep did? How much, Simmons? how much was the uh, cameo? It's a good question that I don't remember the answer to. Two, three hundred bucks. Wow. Money well spent. He, um, 
Simmons, you know what he did? Hmm. He went out. Listen to what this guy did. He turns around. And without my knowledge of it, he forms a rogue league, a rogue fantasy league, and he gets Sal to join it. Sal joins it. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, Sal? He's like, I, he's like, Vel, I'm sorry. I got to do it. Because Simmons and I go on his show, and we have to have the thing to talk about. I have to do it. I couldn't believe it. I was a betrayal. Mm. Then I found out Kevin Hench did it too. Oh, oh boy! What, 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 what's your stake in this game, Hench? These are dark days. This is more than Housewives. This is so more I dramatic. Don't I don't. I don't know what. So now um, <clears throat> we're going to have to make an announcement. Now, did you? Who won this year? Dave Damashek. Yeah. The cool cat spelled with two K's. <laughs> cool cat. Do you know once Mark Garagos? I don't know if you know this. Mark Garagos was uh, was kind enough. Powerhouse. <laughs> Our broker attorney once uh, once took several minutes out of his busy life to draft a document that if I don't kick you, it's a legal document that if uh, if if Dave Damashek, this was three years ago now, doesn't kick you out this year, if you sign this, you can't kick him out for five more years. Wow. Savvy, right? <laughs> right. Who needs it? Who needs it? No, when you're a dynasty, you don't need that. But it still is a nice security blanket for me. So uh, obviously, you can't uh, give us a peek behind the curtain. No, but no. you're toying. You have ideas. I mean, it, it's not my way. You know, I'm a man of peace, mm. Adam. Mm. It, it, it goes against everything I am, but I have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah, that's and it'll I mean. be in person this year, right? Let's hope so. God, oh, willing. God. God willing, Adam. <laughs> Please have Mike film this. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it sort of it sort of turned into tail hook. You know, tail hook used to just be Navy pilots getting together in like Ensenada for a mm. few beers. You know, tail hook is called the guys who land on carriers okay. or tail hookers. Oh, is you that gotta, right? You got to hook the tail on the cable when you land on the carrier. So it was a tail hooker. You know, a few pilots having a few beers in Rosarita. It turned into a, a, a garish, debaucherous Vegas, you know, <laughs> strippers. And it goes, I feel like that's what this fantasy draft people, is looking, yeah, is turning people, into. People became very interested in this at large when um, the aforementioned Brad slash Randy took uh, his kick out from at the hands of the Dutch MOOC. They have an ongoing rivalry. They, mm-hmm. If either wins, the other one is sure to get kicked out. We under, There's no intrigue around that. But um, he uh, Randy was so upset that he walked out the door forgetting that he wasn't going uh, out the door but was, in fact, walking out to a second-floor window with one of those little fire escapes, and he was too ashamed to come back in, so he uh, he just jumped off. Of <laughs> I do no, he what... don't, no, wait, wait, no. Did he? I can't remember. Did he jump? No, I can't remember. He, or did he, he walk back in there, shame? I know the. I know the room. There's yeah. a door, and it looks. You could think you're heading out right. like George Bush, but you just head out into a fire escape where people just stand out there and smoke. <laughs> right. But you cannot get to the parking lot. Is that was like that? That's what they mean by walk of shame. I think that's where that yeah, phrase came from because I think he had to walk back through the room after he exited very dramatically. He had to mm. walk past all of us again. Oh, he also once spiked a uh, one of his uh, cherry Mountain Dews or whatever concoction. <laughs> And he likes to drink. What is the what's the date for the draft? The, whatever the day before the NFL regular season, whenever that is. What is that? September, is it a third? Do we September-ish? start? Yeah. We start with a. Yeah, well, we always the, start with that early game. Thursday night game. Yeah. I forget what it is this year. That's it's always weird. the defending champ host. No, yeah. yeah. So who would that be? Tampa is playing the Cowboys. It's the Cowboys at uh, at Tampa. Mm. Is what it'll be. And you have no desire to get in on this. No, I, I first off. It's, it's it's strained so many relationships, you that's, know. That's I what it I talk like. to Hench on really week has. six. It's like you fucking believe what uh, you believe with these guys. You know, he's pissed at Simmons. Yeah, he trade. doesn't like this last minute. I got the fucking email on Saturday at twelve oh seven in the morning. Jesus Christ, you can't do that. Like these guys get very man. serious. They get very earnest. It is about not it. interesting enough to go into. It is super tedious, and there are volumes that. Have been written on text message about it back and forth, and they are not pleasant. And these are people who are very fun, deeply funny human beings. Who between Tall John and Hench, and I mean Sal, I mean I all have, the people we just named, I have to sit cross emails, like really calling in to question sincerely. There's no, there's no bit to it. No, just full on acrimony. 
co- a real questioning of what kind of character you have as a wow. as a human being Jeez. to right. say something like that. It's right, the, it's just the best and the worst thing ever. Yeah, you, and then you get then you get caught in between. Like the the two guys are there in their piss. Okay, okay, who would you rather have, Ernest Biner or Todd Gurley? Let him answer. Let him answer. That's not a fair trade. It's not a fair. That's t- exactly what it was. It was all about the biggest blow up ever was about Todd Gurley. <laughs> And somehow Hench said something that really ticked off. Oh, it was, it's just about, this sounds like a case for uh, Judge Cruzy. Yeah. Right? Cruz Court. <laughs> All right. Well, forget the name game. That was, oh, a, that's that, was it? A, that was enough for me. I want to, I want to do a spot and then we'll, uh, oh, no spot. Then we'll get into, uh, we'll get into the news. So let's just take a, a quick break. We'll do the news with Sheck right after this. Do the news with crap. News with Gino Grad, breaking viral, weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad, stuff face on TMC, Joe Biden, Kamala, meet news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. Sheck, do you work with a creative team? Like, I mean, getting Fred Lynn. To kick off Bill Simmons is it's 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 a masterpiece. It's a stroke, but it also seems like you have a team behind it. It's like, well, I remember talking about it with Sal and what we should do and everything. And Sal, to the moment to, that we, you just replayed there when I kicked him out, Sal wasn't one hundred percent sure, and that's why his dolo- diabolical plan can always come back and and uh, bite him like a snake because he said until the instant Fred Lynn showed up. And mentioned Bill Simmons, he thought there was an outside chance it might be Dwight Gooden, his uh-huh. hero from the from the Metropolitans. Who mm-hmm. knows what? Maybe maybe he'll see Dwight Gooden in a couple of weeks. Nice reunion for <laughs> Sal and uh, his favorite Metropolitan. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Gina. Well, we do have a bit of breaking news. New York Attorney General Letitia James just announced that Governor Andrew Cuomo did, in fact, sexually harass multiple women and in doing so violated federal and state law. And this just in since the show started, Biden has now called on Cuomo to resign. The investigation specifically found that Cuomo, quote, sexually harassed current and former New York State employees by engaging in unwelcome and non-consensual touching and making numerous offensive comments of a suggestive sexual nature that created a hostile work environment for women. Investigators also found evidence that Cuomo and his senior staff took actions to retaliate against at least one accuser. Uh, I pulled this honey of a clip from this was back in March when he gives this big, long speech and said, um, God, I wish Kyle was here. Uh, you know, I I commend all women for going forward. And my lawyers told me, you know, not to get out in front of this. And, you know, I'm a lawyer, too, but I'm going to do it anyway. And here's what he had to say about the accusations. But this is what I want you to know. And I want you to know this from me directly. I never touched anyone inappropriately. I never touched anyone inappropriately. I never knew at the time that I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. I never knew at the time I was making anyone feel uncomfortable. And I certainly never ever meant to offend anyone or hurt anyone or cause anyone any pain. That is the last thing I would ever want to do. So now the president is calling for him to resign. Well, this is the tough part, because if this shit happens to Trump, he just just goes, eh, the bitch had it coming, or I paid her off, or whatever. When your platform is all women need to be heard and Mm -hmm. all voices need to rise up and it is not okay, and even a touch on the shoulder if it's unwell, if that is your entire world, then when someone accuses you of it, you're in this fucked up place where you have to go, all women (laughs) need to be, well, most women. Almost all women. Almost all women. (laughs) except for these nine, need to be listened to. And it is never okay, except for on rare occasion in the governor's office. So this is a bizarre world where you're sort of, it's like the tobacco industry. It's like, we need you to spend $50 million a year showing diseased lungs on the side of your product. 
who's paying for this? Oh, you are. Yeah. <laughs> but our business is selling cigarettes. Correct. Yeah, I know, but we need a warning saying this will kill you tonight. And you guys, who's paying for the packaging? You guys. So he, he has to simultaneously make a speech that all women need to be believed, and <laughs> I'm innocent. Yeah. That's a weird position to be rope. in. Right. Yeah. So we'll see what We're happens. We're still with cool that. with uh, smelling babies, though, right? There's oh, no yeah. Ways that's that's, that's okay, cool. Um, you guys have been doing the show since this came out. He actually, uh, this is legitimate, too. You're, this is going to be a big deal when you walk out of here. You'll find out. He and his team put together a video. Oh, no. Saying it's a this, montage. Oh, you, know, you saw it? I think I saw oh, some. Oh, you did of it. see it. What okay. is it? What is it? It's him saying, I, I, it's not that I do that to wit. I do that to everybody. Oh, and it's a montage awesome. of him creepily kissing and groping all manner of human being. So I, that's his I, that's his defense. I, I, I didn't lindy. just do I, I wasn't a creep with, with young women. I was a creep with everybody. Oh boy. It's, it's that's <laughs> and that's your strategy. Doing it to everybody. But it's also so like weirdly indicative of the time we're living in because uh I'm no Cuomo fan, but it just doesn't seem to be a lot of meat on the bone here. There's a lot of I didn't I, I, he made me felt this way. Mm. Uh, he put his hand on my shoulder. He kissed me on the forehead. I mean, you know, this is uh, stuff that would work right now. Mm-hmm. But if, in any other time in history, if you went back and tried to, oh, let's let's see if we can get uh, Bill Clinton out right. of there. Because he kissed someone on a forehead or he went to a wedding and he called them uh, Bella Chow, Chow or something. Like, people would be looking at you yeah. confused. Like, Take well, a th- seat, that, Bill. Yeah, that, that's not a... A real thing, but it's an interesting time we're living in, which is the whole nursing home scandal thing that has some meat on the bone. Mm-hmm. There's some stuff there, and people may have died because he sent them premium. He may have cooked the books and the numbers and stuff. That's a that's an allegation where we have a bunch of dead people. This is a bunch of people being stroked on the hair, and he's like out. <laughs> The nursing home thing. So, like, yeah, we can look the other way on that one, but not this one. Is this kind of an Al Capone on tax evasion thing? It's just such a hot button thing that we, we as a society, literally, if you're accused of killing 6,000 elderly people by telling them to go back to nursing homes, we can live with that. You stroking the chick's hair at the wedding... Out. I don't like that. Yeah, it's it like rules. a litmus test for America. Like, right. which of these is worse? <laughs> you chose the wrong one. I society. do this one all the time. Like, <laughs> if you had a family member and they were going to have an interaction with Cuomo, which would you rather? <laughs> Sent back to a so COVID-infested true. nursing home to die in their bed, or or hair stroked at a wedding? Yeah, neither one appropriate. One worse. One deadly. <laughs> one lines up I, with you dead. I think we have the montage. Oh, we have the montage. This is good. Indeed, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of photos of me using the exact same gesture. <laughs> I do not have Black and white. <laughs> kissing young, men, babies. This looks like Saturday Night Live. Straight. Someone's got a meme in like a, a manatee or something. Powerful people. <laughs> He's wow. kissing Friends, Al Gore. He has a point. Strangers, <laughs> people who I meet on the street. He does make a solid point. Uh, a lot does. of cupping Is with it? the hands. I guess it's a little like Clemenza in The Godfather, who you know was handsy with everybody <laughs> too. Like Mikey, you don't get like. It is a different time, though. You must, I guess you have to adjust to the time, right? But it is. I, there's like one allegation of somebody going up to the governor's mansion and for some tech issues or something and him closing the door or something. There's like there's like one or two that's like a little bit, eh, sounds right. weird, but I, yeah. Also, as I always kind of say, I, the, the accumulation thing is not good for the court of law or even public opinion. You what, know? what number does it add it's up like to? like saying, uh, well, you have you were involved with vehicular manslaughter. Yeah, but you rolled through a hundred four way stop signs on a Sunday. <laughs> right. like, yeah, that doesn't add up to anything. Yeah, but you did it a bunch of times. It's like, yeah, OK, I did a, almost nothing a bunch of times, but you broke the law. Over and over, and it's sort of like, yeah, but it wasn't that wasn't that much? And they go, and they, it's like, well, now there's an eleventh accuser, 
who's accusing you of rolling through another four-way stop? We're talking about leading the police on a on a chase and firing a pistol out of the window. This is just another yep. one of these, unless unless there's something bigger that I'm I'm unaware of. It, it's weird that you had to put together. It's the opposite, but it. related to like when you go to the carnival and you throw the ball at those uh, at those uh, pygmy things oh. and try to knock them over. It's like. Yeah, but like I hit him three in a row and I won the big stuffed animal. It's like that's not fair. I played seventy times. I, I I waste untold amounts of money. I knocked down one pygmy in every round. Like you know, yeah, but you didn't knock down enough. You don't get the prize. You got to like, do them all at once. Right, exactly. What's the well, right amount of victims, Dave? <laughs> yeah, David. What's the right about a pygmies? <laughs> or maybe your mom will know. I hope you kick me out. None of these three. You could kick all three of them out, but I don't care. I want out anyway. Put me in jail. I hope you put me in jail. Maybe that's what Cuomo should try is the Simmons approach. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> See the opposite, and you trick everybody. Yeah, now. I'm getting yeah, a little soulful with my Simmons. Right. You really are. Now, and, you know, it's weird because Biden was getting the whole rap of he was a head sniffer. Yeah, and now he wants Cuomo it's out. Not, it's the, it's a, cl- a close cousin of the f- forehead sniffers, yeah. the side head the sniffer. Hand yeah, like what? Uh, what is this? Well, All right, what is the biggest allegation? Is it like somebody went to the governor's office? I think he kind of leveraged. There was implied <laughs> leveraging of professional opportunity, right? I mean, that's called well, being the boss, baby. He was, uh, and I, I think the general thing is he was kind of a dick and the climate over there sucked to work at. Right, and again, the investigators found evidence of uh, him and a staff member sort of leaning on one accuser. Mm, oh, right. No, that's retaliation bad. charge. Yeah. Uh, you said there wasn't a lot of meat on that bone. Maybe you'll think there's a lot of meat on this bone. Another photograph has emerged of a f- uh, an airline passenger duct taped to a seat oh, after this. getting crazy. This was on a Frontier, Frontier Airlines flight after he allegedly punched a male flight attendant and inappropriately touched two female flight attendants. There he is, duct taped. Uh, that's according to well, Fox News. video of this. Well, here we go. What's 20, more yeah. unnerving <clears throat> when you see the flight attendant with the roll of duct tape <laughs> walking with purpose down the aisle? <laughs> Either a person or a a, wing. The plane is broken, (laughs) or is it B? Someone is completely out of control, and we need to tape into a seat. Like what? What's worse or better news? Yeah, I don't like either of those. I I have. I forgot my my duct tape story. I yes, early pioneer (laughs) of duct tape. uh, Well, (laughs) airline duct tape story. Oh, do tell. Very early. Very early. Pre, you know, these Johnny Come Latelys with their uh, in-flight duct tape stories. I, I pioneered this thing. Uh, you can stop it there for a second, Max Penn. Flying from Tampa, 1998, 99 with Dr. Drew. A million years ago, we were doing some shows or maybe MTV flew us out there for some sort of spring break. I just remember we were in Tampa and we are flying home. And um, we were, I haven't told this one in a while, so... It, it's a story I've told, but it's been a while. Uh, I mean, Drew were in first. I think I was alone for some reason. Drew went on to New York or something, but I was sitting in first class and uh, the storage bin above me, they'd shut it and then they'd move their hand and it would creep mm. open again with mm-hmm. the pneumatic opener. And she'd shut it with a little more purpose the second time. And then, and by the way, when you're shutting things that keep opening, mm. you holding your hand there for three Mississippi <laughs> the fourth time you do it doesn't fix the latch. You know, it's like now I'm gonna I'm gonna get it used I'll to this, this position. <laughs> Move the hand, it starts starts opening. So of course it's like I gotta go talk to the pilot, you know, we gotta we gotta get the maintenance, whatever. And you know when the maintenance guy comes out oh, with the clipboard and stuff to settle in. So uh, of course it's it's above me. So I go uh well, why don't we just get whatever's in it? Well, we can't take off. and we, They all have to be closed so we can take off. I said, oh, all right, well, the, the, the plane's not that crowded. We'll just take out whatever's in that one, and we'll throw it in another one, and we'll take off. Oh, it's empty. This is, this is I'm, I will tell my son this story soon so he'll l- l- know what to expect <laughs> it, for his miserable life. It's empty. I go, well, well, then if it's empty, who cares if it's up? Well, you can't. We have to close it. Why? Because it needs to be closed. How come? Well, so things don't fall out and fly. But there's nothing in there. You think air is going to fall out? There's nothing. It's empty. Why don't we just take up, sir? Sit down. You're about to get tased. Raise your voice. (laughs) But you're going to get the maintenance guy. It's going to take. It's going to be two and a half hours. We're sitting on the tarmac, sir. We have to take off. We can't take off unless it's closed. Latch shut. But 
But if it's empty, then then we could take off, sir. So then I go, get some duct tape. Just go get some duct tape. Yes, sir. Let me just get the maintenance guy. Maintenance guy comes out. <clears throat> he's got the screwdriver. He's getting the Allen wrenches. He's doing his thing. He's trying it. It's, it's creeping open and crying. He leaves again. I'm just looking at this. It's, it's empty. It's empty. Let's just push back. There's nothing in there, sir, please. At some point after an hour, this guy fiddling with it, he shows up with a roll of duct tape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pulls out a strip, <laughs> shuts it, duct tapes it, closed, and I'm looking at the stewardess, and she goes, don't you say a fucking word. No <laughs> way, no up. way. Do not say a word to me. Do no not say a word. Because I told her two hours ago, oh, go get go some duct tape. tape and put on the thing, and when that guy got the duct tape out, I was just looking at her. <laughs> and she just said, shut up, don't say anything. She gave me like a preemptive, do wow. not say a word. That's good. Yeah, it was a I'll tough do- flight for me <laughs> in first class. We have anything no to refills. drink, nope, not for me. No. You're out of champagne. We haven't even taken off yet. Absolutely. <laughs> Bone dry. Uh, epilogue story. to that. Would you like the liver or the liver, sir? <laughs> <laughs> say chicken or beef? No, no. Let me put my special sauce on that mm-hmm. for you, sir. The, uh, I just flew a few weeks ago, and there was a leak on a not rainy day from the roof of the airplane in the cabin, it was just dripping down, and they came out very quickly, and they duct taped it right up. Like, wow. let's go. And I, unlike you, wasn't like, that's a good solution. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We definitely should be taking off. We should definitely launch ourselves 30,000 feet in the sky with a, a leaky it? plane. You just put a tape over it. That's the solution in 2021. Are you be, sure? It's got to be condensation from the air conditioning, right? Either I way. don't know what it was. I, 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 they need to explain it to me. The thing's leaking. I don't know what that is. It's an airplane. Not a golf cart. It's a, we're going to be up in the sky. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's, okay. Hear, let's watch the guy okay. get, get uh, pummeled. Okay. Or him pummel somebody else. And then else. I'll, I'll give you a little backstory <clears throat> on this afterwards. You guys Guy fucking orange. suck. My parents are worth more than fucking two million goddamn dollars. And you know what? You fucking suck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? My grandpa is worth more than your fucking money. My fucking attorney. Shut the fuck up! He's trying to hit the male flight attendant. Come on! He's trying to hit the male flight attendant. Everyone's trying to restrain him. Now he's being wow. ducked into his chair. And they're all roasting him. They're all roasting him. Around his mouth like Hannibal Lecter. They're loving it. Wow. They're using that packing tape. I don't think this is, is a duck. Yeah. They're masking him up. He's sure he can breathe. Over his mouth. Oh, man. So that was amazing. So wow. here's the deal. He's 22 years old. Years old. If Cousin Sal was on that flight, he would have fart chambered for that guy. <laughs> I was going to say, that's that's uh, not my favorite uh, Josh Gardner character. It's not, a, <laughs> not as inspired as some of his past works. Yeah, he's a 22-year-old from Ohio. He was At first, he was kind of brushing his hand in the, an empty cup up against a flight attendant's backside. And then he came out, he came out of the bathroom with no shirt on because he had spilled his drink all over himself. And then and uh, a staff tried to help him get another shirt out of his luggage, and then he grabbed her chest <gasps> before punching that dude in the face who co- was called over to monitor him. So he was a mess. And, uh, Are his parents really worth $2 million? Who's to say? He worked He's on his frontier. grandpa in, too. Yeah, grandma, grandpa. <laughs> so, yeah. Check. I was pitching the other day. We got the reinforced cockpit door. We need the reinforced bathroom door now. We need a, a cage. We have to lock these people in. Con Air. We have to go. You know, have to have what they idea. do what uh, uh, the wolf man does. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, or uh, 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 Gene, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Or, or, how much I scream. Yeah. Dr. Do Jekyll. Not open we ha- we must lock. We must have a reinforced bathroom door <laughs> and we just have to lock them in there. <laughs> I'll sign off. No notes. Yeah. No. Smart. Um, some more big news coming out of New York. New York City will start requiring proof of vaccination to enter indoor places. Indoor places like restaurants, fitness centers, entertainment venues, theaters, arenas. Mayor Bill de Blasio announced this and said, if you want to 
participate fully in society, you have to get vaccinated. And this will go into effect on September 13th. The mandate comes a week after Broadway says it will require vaccinations for staff and audience to see shows. By the way, um, Pantages, same thing, because we're going to see Hamilton and we have to have our vaccination cards. I'm trying to think of the sort of self-selecting Broadway crew. Mm -hmm. They're probably good. I would argue with no mandates, you'd be in the mid 90s in terms of vaccinations in that crowd. Yeah, you're right. That's my guess. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, De Blasio also said there'll be no option to enter indoor businesses with just your negative test. He also said that although he would encourage everyone to mask up, no mask mandate, just Hmm. vaccination card mandate. Well, at least it's consistent. I know, but these cards are literally... A piece of white paper, like they're, they're not chipped. Forged. They're not. Oh, they're yeah. not. They're a piece of paper. No, no. Yeah, you can go down to any park around here. I mean, you can go down and get a fake ID right. anywhere now. Any kid with a computer could probably knock one of these things off. And, right? and people are going to spend more money getting a fake vaccination card than just getting a free vaccination. It's a good point. And also, I thought, like back in the day, like with Victory Gardens, and like I thought, like taking your polio shot or whatever. I thought that was patriotic. Yeah. Is that not patriotic there's, anymore? Uh, there's some interesting numbers out of New York. Like, I think, like, 40% of teachers in New York are not vaccinated. Maybe 40 mm-hmm. or higher percent of healthcare workers. That's there's a nice large the group of, of people that are not me. vaccinated in, in, in Manhattan or New York City. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a weird number. I don't get you that. You can blame Ron Johnson. I blame yes. Ron Johnson. And Valerie Val- Taylor Green. Yep. <laughs> Valerie <laughs> Taylor Green. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for getting the wrong message out. Or Tucker, whoever right. got the message out. Right. Uh, so we had some hot DeBaby news yesterday. Oh, now yeah. Now I have an update, a DeBaby update. He has <clears throat> apologized for the comments he made about gay men and HIV what during a shock. a performance at the Rolling Loud. He took Loud a hard stance yeah, yesterday. Music mm-hmm. Festival in Miami. By the way, he was also kicked off of... Austin City Limits and the iHeart Music Festival. So maybe perhaps that oh. prompted the apology. Not sure. Mm-hmm. C- CNN <laughs> reports that the move comes days after his comments were condemned by big stars, Elton John, Madonna, Questlove, Dua Lipa. The rapper wrote in an Instagram post that Ooh, he wanted uh, to. This, this, okay. Well, first off, does, oh. has Elton John heard of Da Baby? I doubt it. <laughs> so why does he need to condemn <laughs> Mr. Da Baby? You know what I mean? Like, why? I, I, I hate the, I hate the stars Ooh. that chime in more than I hate the person that said whatever <laughs> offensive thing it is. Like, you got to call it's a pretty easy. And line. also, when it's 2021, the guy's up there going on a homophobic rant. Do I really need to go? This is not right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're all on the same side. Know, on John he's been thrown off of every right. every concert tour venue Ooh. he's going on. I, we get it. We, Is that we a good way yeah. to stay in the we news, though? Yes. To get your name in, like the publicist? I don't know that Elton John needs it, but Dave Damashek might get in that business. Like, I'm going to start condemning, start condemning stuff. Yes. Yes. Condemn the Daily baby. Con- condemnation from Dave. Yeah. yeah. Elton John redid The Candle in the Wind for uh, Princess Di. He mm-hmm. could redo Leave On for uh, mm-hmm. Baby. Mm-hmm. And it shall be the baby. <laughs> And it shall be. Oh, no, working. So he wrote that he wanted to apologize for the hurtful comments he made. He wanted to apologize to the LGBTQ plus community. He knows that HIV and AIDS education is important. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, it's two paragraphs long. I think we get the point. That, I mean, Somebody composed this, right? Oh, you think? Well, here's the whole thing. Now, this is just publicists on publicists. Uh, you know, squaring off in the octagon right. because Elton John didn't condemn him sure. either. That's Elton John's publicist or her handles the right. Twitter feed. That person gets out front and condemns it. And then whoever does this for DeBaby is now. So you're really just it's the De, baby's person is now in a battle with Elton John's person. It's right. not the baby or Elton John. That's where we're at now. They're both being told to lay low and let us handle this. Right. Yeah, you're right. So apologies all around. Uh, an update on, a, remember we talked about the Angelina Brad Pitt lawsuit that was like still happening after so long? There's another update on another I stopped by feud. his house in the neighborhood yesterday. What? He's, uh, he's allegedly moving in up the street from me. Oh. And uh, it's oh, uh, the scuttlebutt wow. from the from the real realtors. Move over, really? Tom Cruise. And uh, good riddance, Vince Vaughn. And they're doing some work on the house, you know. Yeah, that's right. And I I walked by, and I just stopped. I was just looking at the house, and I thought, what if at some point after he moves in, I just 
you know, swing by with a funnel cake or something. Yeah. Yeah, what would go on with that? Would, nice. he, yeah. would he know who I was when he answered the door? That's would he think I was question. just a random neighbor? Only one way to find How out. would it be received? We got to find out. Yeah. You definitely should do that. And it would be, I mean, a real Whoa. feather in your uh, lifelong cap if you could say that the guy who ran Fight Club, you knocked him out in four seconds. If, if things got sideways, if he didn't appreciate That's the right. funnel cake, That's which right. he would. But if he if he said something rude to you, like, I don't know who you are, and, you know, that went and things went south from there, you could probably take uh, Pitt. Oh, yeah. Man. Dave, I, mm. I know you're, sorry, I, no, I, no. Jump in there. I know you're a fan of the actor redundancy, as we do that once in a while, you know, yeah. where the, the actor does a remarkably similar thing in two movies. You're a great example of Kevin Spacey you know, the, with the police sketch in two movies. Uh, Brad Pitt, uh, I have one right here. I've been working on this. Brad Pitt, in two movies, both written by Quentin Tarantino, Brad Pitt is extremely high, almost to the point he can't function, when ruthless gun-toting murderers show up at his door <clears> and he miraculously <throat> survives in both films. Once upon a time in Hollywood, true, true, romance. true romance. That's absolutely right. My favorite one, uh, my new favorite number one, is Billy from Predator. Uh, you know, the... He's, Indian. He, right. He st- in, in that... And in 48 hours, he gets killed holding a giant Rambo knife. And Predator, of course, he stands out. He takes his last He's stand on that log st- mm-hmm. across the ravine and waits for the Predator beast to come and get him. Mm-hmm. Guy kills him. You know, the beast. Guy, spoiler alert. He doesn't mm-hmm. make it. And uh, same thing in forty eight hours. He gets up from a bed where he's where he just uh, where he's post coitus with his whore. And when Eddie when Eddie Murphy shows up, and uh, Eddie Murphy shoots him dead. But before he does, Billy stands up with a giant Rambo knife and he goes wow. ha 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 ha, just like in Predator. He goes ha ha ha. ha. He dies laughing and thing, shirtless, laughing with a knife. shirtless, holding a giant Rambo knife. Mm. What the hell? That's the greatest <laughs> one of all time. Signature move. All right, one more, Gina All Grand. right, well, we'll, we'll hold off on the Depp Heard drama. Uh, let's see. Wait, what's the... Yeah, I want to okay, hear that okay, one. Okay, okay, we'll do it. Um, so, more than four years after their divorce, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard still fighting in court. Oh, good. But... Depp has won the most recent legal battle. A New York judge recently ruled that a charity must unseal documents that pertain to donations by his ex-wife. And I'll refresh you on that story. In the divorce settlement, she pledged to donate $7 million awarded to her from Depp to the ACLU and to Children's Hospital LA. That was the whole thing. Like, I'm not even keeping the money. And there was no way to prove that that had ever been donated. Well, Depp's lawyer has called her promise a calculated and manipulative lie. They believe Amber's uh, alleged lies contributed to Depp Depp losing his libel case when the tabloid called him a wife beater and they Mm -hmm. said let it stand. His legal team feels confident that unsealing the document will prove Amber never donated the $7 million. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out. Hey, can I ask Mm. a quick question? Brad Mm. Pitt, Tom Cruise, two pugilists, obviously, in movies past. I'd love to see the guys who actually took training like Jason Bourne, Matt Damon, mm-hmm. who would win those fights? Like they, they're not strangers to fisticuffs and hand to hand combat because they had, you know, they always like to brag. I took, I took six weeks of of training of of martial arts training. You know, Cruz is very yeah, that's sure. serious minded well, when he talks about. I mm-hmm. learned under the sensei. You know, he gets very mm-hmm. weird about that. What's stuff. interesting about that who is whether it's those? whether it's snatch or um, what's the other one where Fight Club. Yeah. Brad Pitt is like portraying a not trained fighter. So I wonder if that's part of the gig is he like he didn't bother chewing a training he's just a, I a think brawler. Cruz would be good though because he's because like I say he's well but what about Matt Damon Matt Damon does that Jason Bourne stuff yeah he kills guys with books I have an answer go ahead it's gonna be a little disappointing mm-hmm. but it's all it's how life works okay. Mario Lopez excuse me <laughs> go on I've sparred with that guy he can bang <laughs> And that's what life. A, you know what, what I mean? Shame. You want it to be between this guy or that A-lister that the answer is Mario Lopez would really? beat him. And that's the, that's life. That's how life works. <laughs> I don't know what the message is, but it's a bummer. Eh, it's, it's a disappointment. <laughs> yeah, that's vague, all. Vague disappointment. It's a vague yeah, disappointment. Right. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Ha <laughs> ha, these two dopes. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news. Billy. With Gina Grad. Oh, we got Billy with the knife. What in hell? What in hell? The best? 
Hey, Ace, because I hear from your wonderful listeners all the time, and I always appreciate the nice notes. I just wanted to let you know, right now, no decision made on Fruit of the Year. Obviously, we have several months left to go, but I did why we we had another not exactly pleasant conversation, Adam and myself, at uh, – Interrupted the festive and Jimmy too, who gets in with this plum nonsense. But anyway, yeah, I, I'm sorry, but when he starts off with the plum, I have to. It's sort of it's a null point. and void I, thing. It's I how to, I feel. I, I don't want to embarrass politely. him, but I say th- you know you're out of your depth, Jimmy. Mm. You know you know about things. When there you start with the you know plum, about. that's when I. I mean, notice I sort of did a half turn toward you and sort of I, just I did, kind of turned my shoulder to Jimmy. You were gracious. Though, I was I nice, say. but you don't start with the plum talk. I went in after Corolla. I said like, why do you take the social media to disparage what is right? Right now, a delicious yellow peach. And uh, Adam, Adam said, David, we're here to celebrate Sal this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> but the yellow peach is extraordinary. Watermelon, it's in oh, its prime. Gina, thank you. Oh, thank you. I was just really about good. to ask you, has the watermelon ever won? Because the watermelon, sure. very underrated. The best texture of any fruit on the planet, very hydrating, very broad, very hmm. broad audience, to the point where did you know that there was a gorilla that they trained in sign language, and the word that she came up with for watermelon was sweet candy water. Is there a better description of a watermelon, I ask you? You cannot imagine how wrong you are. She was there. Jane Goodall right. says no. And Onion was hurt cry food. Isn't that one oh, guy man. who, who yeah. looks like Mick Jagger, the singer? Doesn't he sing a song about watermelon? Oh, the Harry Styles, yeah. It's Harry mm-hmm. Styles. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a metaphor for something yeah, else. I think fellas. it is. Yeah. Um, what and, is uh... and the Envy Apple is just doing something <sighs> historic. Wow. Apples take a couple months off. That's what fruits do. They they have to take a to rejuvenate and, sure. and, and get back in the lab and figure things out and be better for the next season. Not the Envy Apple. The Envy Apple is on a run. It's It's got to be 14 months deep now. Like, it, it, every, I, I've never heard of an apple that All tastes right, good I'm, in I'm, July. You're getting lumped in with uh, Kimmel and the Plum. <laughs> but in another episode, when Sheck comes back, I don't want to know what the best fruit is. I want to know what the best pit is to suck on. Oh, from because a stone fruit. Because the stone. I, I'm not a huge, you know, plums don't crack my top eight. But number one, suck on the stone mm. fruit. It's just walking around with the wow. thing in your mouth. Like All a right. Nectarine. Uh, Minnesota or Minneapolis, I should say. Acme Comedy Co. That's uh, coming up August 27th, 28th. Royal Oak, Michigan coming up. Uh, that's at the Royal Oak Music Theater, September 10th. You can go to amcurl.com. There's live shows everywhere. You can check out my un- unprepared album, Volume 1, 10 tracks on that. It's a digital album. You can do that on Amazon or Apple Music. Dave Damashek, minus three extra points with Cousin Sal as well on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you find better podcasts. And uh, Jeff Ross, RoastmasterGeneral.com. So, until next time, Sam Kroll, Dave Damashek, and Jeff Ross, and Gina Grant, and Bob Bryant, say it. Mahalo. I wasn't a creep with with young women. I was a creep with everybody.